Snackers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. So you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. As the leaves begin to fall and fall comes back into play. Football is on the field and soccer is in play and schools are back in. But some of us start to think, what will winter sports be like? As here this afternoon, you'll get a preview of what the f winter sports season will sound like when Jim and Haley will be on in about four more minutes for Beyond the Arc, a wrap around basketball for the upcoming season. the leaves begin to change and the gridiron battles begin to end the courts start warming up soon you will hear what it's going to look like in 2022 and 23 for the basketball season as we get an update from jim debelt mr basketball and Haley bacon his co-host with all the special guests in store hang in because we're in for a ride folks three more minutes to go Just about two more minutes to go, folks, and we'll be at tip-off time for this show here at Beyond the Arc with Jim DeVelt and Haley Bacon. Then one minute to go, folks. One minute to go. Get your popcorn ready. Get your soda pops because it's about that time for Mr. Jim DeBelt and Haley Bacon to talk basketball to you in one minute.
nine, seven, six, five, four. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the show. Welcome to Jim DeBelt and Haley Bacon for Beyond the Arc. Take it away, Jim. Kevin, thank you very much, and welcome everybody on this awesome evening. Haley Bacon with me, Jim DeBelt, for the first episode of Behind the Arc. And Haley, uh, this is something I've I've done in the past. Uh, I had a, a radio show in the past and decided to bring it back out of nowhere with a little arm twisting from Kevin. <laughs> And I uh, wouldn't want to work with anybody else. I'm very excited for this. You know, we got two shows a month. And uh, once we get the hang of this, it's going to go up from there. So. It's, it's going to be great. Um, obviously, there's a lot of great basketball mm-hmm. around the area, around the state. And we're not going to – it's not going to just be Dayton area, folks. Right. It's going to be All the entire state you know? and maybe around the nation. You never know who's going to call in as guests or show up um, when we do our monthly show at Frickers. So just kind of sit back and enjoy it. It's going to be a fun, fun time. It is. And, um, it really is. You know, obviously, we both love the game, and I've been doing this for quite a while, and, and uh, we'll go into that stuff in a minute. But just how excited are you to be able to, to, to bring something like this to basketball fans and family and friends to be able to follow our journey along? And obviously, my perspective from all this is a little different, you know. Um, I was playing, and now it's all changed, you know, and I couldn't be grateful for the opportunities that I've gotten to stay in the game and stay motivated to stay in the game, you know, with these talk shows and us broadcasting and us just, you know, making sure that I stay close to the game with you. So um, I'm very excited for all these opportunities. I really am. Excellent. And we're definitely going to be uh, talking about a lot of stuff coming up. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things we'll be doing together this year is going to be broadcasting a lot of sports here in Tip City. We're here at the uh, Palatial Estates in Tip City. Yep. And um, excited to have you uh, with me for the Red Devils. We're going to yep. be the voice of the Tip City Red yep. Devils this year, including Friday night. They're going to do some big things. Where so. the Red Devils football team opens up against Bellbrook and excited for you and I to have mm-hmm. that game. And, and uh, thanks also to Kevin uh, Fowler, the owner, and the brains behind TKDS <laughs> uh, for, for doing this. Um, you know, you gave us an avenue and, a, and an option to be able to present to – the fans, sports fans, multiple different sports, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but just a little bit of background about kind of what we're about. You know, this is my 38th year in girls basketball, and I've always said I'm going to do this till I do it right. Right. And so 38 years, and, you know, started this back in 1986 when I was a senior here at TIP, and, and uh, thanks to Coach Tom Reddig from the Red Devils, the, uh, we went to the Final Four that year. And he had me do stats for him on the bench. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I got. I don't even know if right. you know this, but then I got started with with the Red Devils, and we go through the tournament. We ended up winning districts on a buzzer beater. Wow! And then we go to the regionals and win regionals on a buzzer beater. Go to state. We defeat Akron Hoban, which is the host team. Goes to tournament. The year was in Akron. Mm-hmm. Um, went to the state finals. Played West Holmes, who had won a hundred and five or six games in a row. Wow. We were up two with seven seconds to go with no three-point line at the line, and we missed the one and one. They come down, score, go to overtime and beat us. And I, on, the, on the bus ride home, I told Coach, I said, I'm hooked. I love this girls' basketball mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. And so he said, you and need you know, to. It's just quick as that. You know, you get into the game, you start playing, and then, you know, you start doing this, and you just get hooked. I mean, it's not that hard to not get hooked, you know. It's hooked. So. And, and the fact that he goes, you need to take what you do well, and that's right, right and promote the game and – I've had I had a lot of people back in the day when nobody cared about girl sports. They said you'll never stick with it because nobody cares. Right. And now, almost forty years later, uh, look what we're doing. Right. Exactly. You know, Ohio's incredible. Uh, we have some great people in the state, and you know, you and I have done well for what we with in the yeah. game in different aspects of the game. And you know, I wouldn't want to have anybody else here except for Haley. And um, I'm going to introduce Haley for a minute, and then she can kind of talk about her background. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so Haley is a 2020 graduate from Greenville High School, which is a fierce competitor in the Miami Valley League from the Red Devils. <laughs> but I think we stole her to do some Tip City stuff <laughs> yeah. for a while. She's still a Greenville girl at heart. Um, so she uh, really came on, her game really came on as a sophomore. Yeah. And then as a junior, you got better. And then the senior year, you just really kind of exploded out onto the scene. You were uh, first team all-conference should have got player of the year. I'm going to go into that. And then you got first team and player of the year in the Southwest District mm-hmm. with um, Aubrey Stupp from yep. Valley View. Yep. Hey, Aubrey, if you're watching. <laughs> and then all-state team came out, and you were first team all-state. 
with Aubrey mm -hmm. again. Uh, you're the only girl in Greenville basketball history to make first team all state. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce Haley Bankin as my permanent partner here on this on the show and in the broadcast. Haley, you want to tell us about your game? A yeah. Bit? So, you know, starting, uh, I was a two sport athlete, softball and basketball. You know, you always have those doubts of like what sport you want to play going on. And, you know, I was always back and forth, like basketball or softball. And basketball really was just my sport, you know. I really enjoyed it. I really just pl really enjoyed playing the game. So, you know, I chose to do that. You know, sophomore year, I really chose to go on towards basketball. Junior year, you know, you followed me all four years. So, you know, I wouldn't be here without you, Jim. So I really want to thank you for all you've done because, you know, I <laughs> you really got my name out there. And uh, I kind of just took it off from there. And you stayed by my side through it all. So uh, now look at us. We're, you know. <laughs> together forever, we're together doing forever this, right? Yep. <laughs> and so my senior year, you know, I uh, ended with uh, I don't know, it was like three hundred something three pointers or whatever. Got my name up there, so it really just you know going back to Greenville. You know, sometimes I visited. I think it was like the last week of school. It just you know going in there after, ever since you know COVID hit and we didn't get a softball season. Just kind of hit at heart, you know. So uh, basketball really is at heart, and I'm thankful to stay in the game, broadcasting with you and. Um, Watching girls, you know, extend their talent and, you know, wishing it, wishing I was still playing. But, you know, I'm thankful for what the opportunities I've gotten. And uh, I'm very excited to continue broadcasting with you. You know, you mentioned something. I know it's it's a sore subject, but let's just talk about the mm -hmm. elephant in the room. Your 2020 softball season yeah. was taken away mm -hmm. from COVID. It got, had to have been tough. Oh, it was uh, – it was not only tough around me, it was just tough for my whole family and, you know, my teammates. And, you know, it started off like, hey, we're just taking a <laughs> five-day break. There's this virus going around. We didn't know. I mean, right. and so we come back. And, no, we actually didn't even get to come back. They uh, told us that we needed to take all our school stuff home, and that's where it went. And, uh, you know, that year was our year. I knew that I knew our that was our year. I mean, we would have went all the way. All right, no doubt in my mind we wouldn't have. So – um, that plays a, plays a role in on, you know, the COVID stuff. And obviously today it's still going on. It's, <laughs> I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So, but you know, my three years that I played softball, you know, I made the most of it. Um, uh, uh, we didn't get where we wanted to be, but, um, you know, things happen. So we had to pick up and go on from there. So. Excellent. And of course, um, you know, one thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be really bringing a lot of the game to you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're just we're just the voice. We have some connections, but we want them to talk to you guys. We want we want you to learn about some of the best players in exactly. the state of Ohio, some of the best players around the country. We're going to have players on our former players that are still playing. One of them's in Australia right now, playing professionally. She's going to be on coming up soon. We've got um, we have a young lady who played basketball in Cincinnati at Lakota East. Who's now in the professional wrestling? Her, yeah. His dad, his, his dad was in W. Her dad was in WWE, and she's a wrestler. <laughs> We're going to have her on. Yeah. Let's talk about what she's doing and how that transitions exactly, made. Yeah. So it's. I mean, we have a lot of different cool guests coming up. Um, you know, between you and I, we we have a lot of good connections, yes. and and uh, it's going to be exciting to uh, to bring that to you to bring that to you guys coming up as we have our first show, our first ever show behind the arc. Um, our guest today. We're going to open up with Riley Sagister coming up shortly, and she's a senior at Tri Village. Mm -hmm. Riley is heading towards a state record if she stays healthy and everything yep. goes well, and she's uh, she's ready to gun for that. And then we have uh, Angie Sater. Uh, Angie is from Prep Girls Hoops. Uh, works with both of us at Prep Girls Hoops. She handles Central Ohio, so we're going to talk about Central Ohio basketball. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we're going to have the new Wittenberg coach on, Melissa Colby. Uh, Melissa. I'm having a hard time reaching her right now. Hopefully she's logged in and be ready to go, but we'll deal with that accordingly. And then after the break at 7, second hour, we got Megan Frazy losing her. Megan was a one of the triplets who played together at Xenia Christian. Um, she's going to be a Where Are They Now segment. So we're going to talk about Megan, talk to Megan about what she's doing now. And we're going to wrap things up with a long segment at the end with Tanisha Benson. Tanisha, mm -hmm. we both know her well. Yep. She runs the OGBR, which is the top single state scouting service in the country. Um, it's an Ohio girls basketball report. They just had the top 64 passed up a, a couple weeks ago. Um, she also runs Sports City U's AAU club. That's, that's going to be back launching um, new next season. Mm -hmm. 
with some partnerships. Uh, but also, we want to we want to bring in Kevin Fowler for a minute. We've got um, we got about th- two three minutes to go. I caught him off guard. No, there's no notes, that, Kevin. That, wait a minute, that's not on the schedule. That's not yet. on the schedule. You're not no. allowed to bring in the man from the box if it's not on the schedule. What it, the heck? It's it's like who's Thank the guy God behind the, the curtain? Soon. It's three like, three minutes to break, guys. What minutes. do you want to know? So <laughs> let's talk about um, the network and the basketball coverage we've got. You know, oh my. You've, you've talked about it before. Girls basketball, and let's just leave it on girls basketball. It's okay. huge. I can't, I can't segregate numbers, so when I talk numbers, it's going to be boys and girls. Okay. It's basketball. It's the craziest time Hell of year yep. for me. I can't, I can't do it. This is 3,000 games last year. Boys or girls, it doesn't matter what it is. 3,000 games. So you tell me. You do the math. I don't know how many people that is, what it is. A lot. But <laughs> it's the busiest, the craziest, the most. And then we stretch in the last few years. We've been all the way down to Florida and we do Florida preps side and everything. And and so it's crazy. Like I said, um, basketball is, is very big time here because when basketball is here, I got other sports too. I mean, we got right. swimming. We got swimming's busy. Wrestling. We got wrestling. We got gymnastics. Soccer. We got and someday, soccer's And done. someday maybe hockey. Well, hopefully. I mean, <laughs> hockey problems in the Lee area. Lee W. Mallon, that's for you. Yeah, exactly. We want hockey back. I don't care do. who's listening right now. I, hey, I'm going to tell you, all for the record, I even got this young lady right here <laughs> liking hockey a little yeah. bit. Well, well, Am I right? You, you know, I was laughing because I'm going to do a little bit of knowledge here from you. So you were talking about that guy on the Penguins team. Do you know mm-hmm. where he's from? Uh, which guy's that? Who had a birthday just recently? You were talking about him Sydney online. Sidney Crosby. 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 Where's Crosby from? He's from Canada. Mm-hmm. Is he from Canada? He is you from sure? Canada. Oh, we have one hundred percent. You sure he doesn't live up in northern Michigan? No, he lives. Who's in the Canada. penguin that's in northern Michigan? Then I don't know. It's Crosby. No, he lives in. He lives. He's from. He's close to Canada. I'm pretty him, sure. Him and McKinnon. I mean, you can tell me if I'm wrong online. I don't know, but I, I can <laughs> You're tell wrong. You, there's somebody on that <laughs> team that's from Traverse City, Michigan. Trust me. Yeah, trust me when and, I say Crosby is definitely and, from Canada. And I think I, his mom and he's got brothers that play too there in Traverse City, Michigan. He might. And, that's and, a good hockey town up there. And, and and so, you know, the rookie league came through there, so I knew his mom and stuff and sure. friends and family and stuff. But I'm pretty sure it was Crosby, so I, I may be wrong. My naivety of that, but you talk basketball. Let's talk basketball, Kevin. Let's I mean, talk basketball. From <laughs> prep girls hoops on the AAU side to the, the tournaments coming up to getting ready for basketball season and the prep stuff. Prep basketball on the boys' side. I got a call just the other day. Florida starts mid-October. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. I ain't done with football. You're talking. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they're already talking to me like they got a circuit for it down there. Yeah. We're going to go probably this year on the boys' side to Arizona, Missouri, different places. Our network in Missouri does a lot of basketball in Jefferson County. I I know he's listening. Ron Wallace down in Ballin' Down South, down in Mobile, Alabama, has got hellacious basketball down there. And it's just crazy. Basketball is just a nuts time for us yep. because we got other sports to do and other things like bowling and all the sports we want to cover. But sure. basketball just takes up so much because it's a huge sport here in Ohio. Exactly. Yes, yep. it is, especially on the girl side. So oh. um, I think it's about time for a break. It's uh, 613 or so. Coming up after the break, we will have, uh, speaking of basketball, one of the best players in the state of Ohio. She was first team all state last year. And she's going after a state record. Riley Sagister from Tri-Village coming back on the break here on the TKDS Sports Network and iHeartRadio podcast. It's Behind the Arc. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. You can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. You can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Back to Jim and Haley for Behind the Arc. Thank you very much, Kevin. And uh, we're back here at about 615 
on the TKDS Sports Network and iHeartRadio, the app. And uh, we are going to bring in a special young lady from your part of the, the yep. Miami Valley, Dark County. Yep. One Dark County girl to another. Yep. Uh, Riley Sagister from Tri-Village High School. And Riley is going after the all-time record. We'll talk about that. I know she's a team player and she wants to first, and she wants to, you know, go out with a very successful season at Tri-Village. And Riley Sagister, thanks for joining us on Behind the Arc. No, thank you for having me. Oh, I think you're on mute, Riley. Can you hear me now? Riley, I think I think you're muted, Riley. Yeah, I don't know. Can you hear me now? Oh, you want to have her call back in? She can try, yeah. You want to try to call back in? Because you're muted, Riley. Yeah, I don't think I'm... Nothing. Nope, she was up earlier. They were working, so... Yeah, I don't... I do not hear her at all on this. Can I mute you? Keep talking. Can you hear me now? She's muted. She is muted. You're muted. You're muted. You need to check your mute. Your your somehow you've muted yourself over there in your computer, Riley. Sorry. Yeah. Got all the callers on. Your green lights. I'm not. My dad said he can hear it. Well, we'll go back to Jim for a minute while we figure this out, folks. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so um, well, hopefully we can get this taken care of, Riley. Yep. Right now we're muted, and, and uh, hopefully... Um, It'll take us a few to, you know, get the hang of all this stuff. and. Definitely. Yeah, you're, yeah we, we, see, we see you, but we don't hear you, so I'm going to pull up her... Uh, I got her stats that were yeah, sent over um, to me. Didn't I write them down? No. Oh, no, we... Right here. Okay, so so Riley is a uh, the WOAC Player of the Year and the District 9 Player of the Year. She's also a Southwest District Player of the Year and a first-team All-State from Tri-Village High School. She has 74 career wins at Tri-Village, 1,371 points, 321 assists, 317 rebounds, and 192 steals in her career. Her total threes... To date, 287 threes. That's currently 10th all-time in the state of Ohio. She needs 89 threes to break the all-time three-point record. That's chucking up a lot of threes. That's yeah. that's, that's that's a good three-pointer. And three that's a great, and I you. mean that respectfully because she's mm -hmm. an outstanding shooter. I mean, if you know you can shoot it, shoot it. Shoot it, and, you know? and that's what she does best. So right now, she's muted. And, well, and a player like her, she can just shoot, you know? She can, she can try to talk. Now, Rayleigh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. We still can't hear. So, um, yeah, Tri Village is a team that, you know, always been successful. Every mm -hmm. year they always have great players. And uh, Riley's no yeah, speaking, different. Yeah, speaking of, um, you know, when I played at Edison. Uh, I played with Maddie Downey. She was from Tri Village, you know. And they're, I mean, they're talented. I mean, they're, they've always been talented. So it's always fun watching them too. You know, they know how to play with each other. They know how to critique stuff. So, <coughs> yeah, definitely. And they do a great job. And they're going to be the favorites again in the WOAC this year. Oh yeah, I'm sure um, they will be. It seems like they never lose a conference game. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, maybe we should just take another quick break, and I'll make a quick phone call, and um. We will try to get them back on again. Yeah. We'll take a quick break and be right back on the TKDS Sports Network. We're celebrating after the little one. Whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. 
We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're All right, we're back here from uh, the brand new show, Behind the Arc. We really apologize. We're having some technical difficulties trying to get Riley Sagster on. So we're going to push her to later in the segment to see if they can get something worked out, maybe call back in and again. I know they just tried to call back in, but we don't hear anything at our end, but they said they heard us. So hopefully it's a glitch and we can get something uh, taken care of at that end of it. We're going to jump ahead. We're going to talk to Angie Sater right now. Angie Sater from Prep Girls Hoops. And Haley, I'll let you start and talk to Angie for a minute. Hey, Angie. It's nice having you on the show tonight. Uh, so, you know, how are you doing with the, uh, preparing for the upcoming season in Central Ohio? How, like, how are you involving in that and preparing for that? Oh, well, first off, thank you for having me. Uh, i I love talking basketball pretty much any time, any day. And really, I feel like there's there's preparation that goes on all year long. Um, I would say that, oh, there she you is. know, that, can you hear me? Yep, we yeah, got you. We got you. Um, I feel like preparation, is, it just goes on all year, all year long. Um, uh, I would say for this fall and winter, I, I have affiliation with uh, Dublin Kaufman. Uh, where I enjoy, you know, I uh, plan to go to some of their practices. And uh, I, in the past, I had uh, had coached a, a middle school team that fed into Dublin Kaufman, uh, but I am not doing that this winter. But but rather, I will be uh, doing some commentating and uh, covering some some games in the Central Ohio area with TKDS. Excellent. So I do plan to do that on, on top of 
of the work that I do with uh, Prep Girls Hoops. And um, and I have involvement also with um, uh, OGBR, with Ohio Girls yep. Basketball Report. So staying busy, you know? So uh, Staying busy, staying out of trouble. Right. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with your seniors. Um, Central Ohio is loaded with basketball players. They won the Division One state championship last year at Reynoldsburg. You mentioned to me before the show that there are some outstanding teams. But let's talk about that in a little bit. Let's talk about the seniors. Who do you want to talk about as far as ex- expectations for a big year this year from Central Ohio? So these kind of car- conversations are always tough for me because there's so much that I can see out of so many players. Uh, and so for, for time's sake, I, I am just kind of uh, thinking off the top of my head of, of some girls that uh, – I, I really think are going to explode and have another great season this year. Uh, starting with Madison Green out of uh, Pickerington Central. Um, she is just, uh, her game is just on. Uh, she's getting some some big offers from uh, some high D1 schools. Uh, she is just, she's a leader, uh, handles the rock so very well, and she makes plays happen. Uh, she, I really, I look to see her having a, a great um, season again this year for Pickerington Central. Um, Jenna Copier out of uh, Dublin Kaufman. So she, um, she unfortunately tore her ACL back. Oh, I should remember this. I, it was early on in the season, um, last season. And so she missed, she missed most of last, last year, but she is, she is back strong, uh, ready to go. And, um, I, I love her game. Um, she just plays with a confidence and in confidence with her, with her teammates. Um, she makes things happen and, uh, she she can light it up from uh from anywhere outside uh but just a fun explosive player uh to watch and my last one to kind of touch on for 23s would be uh kiera uh, mcalrath out of uh, bishop hartley she's not signed uh with anyone to my knowledge yet but just her quickness is is outstanding um she she can one v one against anyone. Uh, her game has massively, massively improved uh, over over the course of her high school career, and um, she's she's one of the best in Ohio. Period. Um, outstanding player to watch. So that that's what I got on my twenty threes. Even though there's so many more I could talk about. Yeah, like you said, you know, there's tons of talent everywhere, but. Uh... Let's now uh, talk about your top 2024 players in Central Ohio coming up this season. Another great class. Um, and it's it's really hard to not talk about um, Pickerington Central. Uh, They're loaded. Barry Wallace. <laughs> uh, she, she, again, so many offers, had an outstanding summer with Ohio United. And <clears throat> she can just, she can hurt opponents inside and outside. Uh, she she plays with a finesse, and and it's fun to watch. She's under control. Um, great footwork. Um, love love her game. Uh, Emily Bratton out of uh, Bloom Carroll. Outstanding uh, dribbling skills, and it just it's like a string. It just it just goes with her so naturally. Uh, but she's just a great leader, outstanding shooter. And, um, she, she can make, it can take multiple defenders to try and stop her. And she still makes something happen. Uh, Denia McDonald out of, uh, Reynoldsburg. Uh, she's, she had transferred from, uh, Whitehall to, to Reynoldsburg. And I look for her to, um, have an outstanding season she she is a beast um she plays with a level of uh intensity that is fun to watch and um handles the ball well but how she finishes around the the rim and inside the lane is um 
she is tough to she's tough to defend, really tough to defend. And I like I love Jamison Stinson out of Sheridan too. She played she played really well in the state tournament uh, last season, and um, you're going to be hearing her name a lot. Like she's going to be breaking records with <laughs> with the threes, the three point attempts, the maids. Like I, she she can play. Excellent. You know, and you look at the, even the younger kids, you look at the 25s this year. It just seems like the talent does not drop off in your area, especially Central Ohio, who are some of the 25s to watch this year. Well, I, I really love Sophie Zio out of uh, Bishop Watterson. Um, <clears throat> again, another just outstanding guard uh, for that team that she – she so often and just naturally takes matters into her own hands. Um, you know, if she's not open for the shot, which I, I firmly believe she could, I mean, she can hit from anywhere. Uh, but she just, she is a playmaker and um, great, nice quickness, uh, high IQ. Um, but yeah, just, yeah. Remember Sophie Zeal. Uh, Gianna Lane, uh, she uh, had transferred from Tree of Life, <clears throat> had a fantastic freshman season, um, and now she's at uh, Hilliard Darby. And uh, look for her also. Uh, again, she just makes things happen. Uh, when the ball was in her hands, she's she's going to shoot or she's going to find someone that's open and make make something good happen. And I love uh, Sophie Peliquin out of uh, out of Newark Catholic. She kind of I've always mentioned uh, I've said this a couple to a few people. She kind of reminds me of a J.C. Sheldon a little bit with her length. Um, I, I just I love how like her long legs just gets her from point A to point B real quick. Um, but I, I like her game. I like how she finishes in the lane and can can nail from outside and <clears throat> strong strong player excellent and we and <laughs> you know we're going to have some and Haley will jump in here in a second i know we're going to probably extend this segment with you uh to get the schedule back online so we'll talk about some other basketball stuff here in a moment but Haley, do you have a question for her as well uh let's talk about your 2026s i know we've talked about you know the younger kids but um the older kids sorry but let's talk about more of the 2026s here and see uh, who fits these standards here? Oh, well, <laughs> two of the, actually all three of these kids that I'm going to mention, I have seen them and I've had the honor of watching them play, uh, when they were very young, like second, third grade. Uh, and I knew then that these three children were going to, they were just special. You could just, you could see it. <coughs> May I I must be talking too much basketball. I'm like losing my voice. Um, but I want to start with uh, Ariana Cradle, AKA Peanut. She's known as Peanut. <clears throat> she is unbelievable. Um, she is getting looks, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, offers from high D1 schools and, uh, outstanding um with how she handles the ball uh with her court vision um i mean there could be <clears throat> i don't even know how she finds seams the way that she does but she just finds them and she makes it happen uh she she's someone that i could see averaging at least 20 a game at least with no issues and so probably five or six a game so, Angie, I think we might need to take a, a quick break so you can go get something. Um, just uh, no, seriously. So we, you, so you're more comfortable talking afterwards. So let's take just a quick break, two minutes. Go get something to drink. We'll be back with you in just a moment. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, we'll be back on the TKDS Sports Network here on Behind the Arc. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one. Whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant. 
more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this We're back here from... Uh, the behind the arc, and um, Haley mentioned something about the 2026. Is Angie? Mm-hmm. I'm assuming you're okay now. So, would you would you like to continue? <laughs> uh, now, now I know. Now I know the secret to how it, to. We're going to say episode one for everybody's way episode from the booth. One. Episode one's always going to have some hiccups, <laughs> but will. one main thing: if you're into this, guys, always have some liquid next to you, some water, some lemonade. Not whatever Coke. else is in your cup, Angie. And, but yeah, right. There exactly. you go. <laughs> yeah, you might want to check Angie's. Uh, I promise. It is water. It is water. Yes. <laughs> uh-huh, I see. <laughs> so, Angie, why don't you ahead and keep talking about the 26s? Okay. So, again, I was I was talking about a cradle out of uh, Westerville South. Uh, just a special player. Um, I, I she she's going to be breaking some records. Uh, in a lot of different areas. Love her defense. I love her intensity. Um, Her IQ has been off the charts since first and second grade. Uh, I had the honor of of, uh, her being on uh, one of my teams uh, with with Ohio Impact. And I, like I said, I I knew then that she was going to be a special player. Um, Blossom Wallace out of Pickerington Central. Again, she... So I know I talked a little bit earlier about uh, her sister, Barry. Uh, that's a 2024. Blossom has a different type of game. She, she is, she is an animal. And I, and I mean to say that in the most like sincere, she, she plays with such, she reminds me of like the, the Tasmanian devil when she's out there on the court because her defense is just, it's intense. And uh, I'll tell you what, you put her on the front of a, of a, any kind of a trap, and it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for opponents to break that um, because she is so aggressive. But I love, love her game. Whitney Stafford out of uh, Olentangy, one of the purest shooters I think I have ever seen. Again, someone else that, um, uh, that I had the honor of uh, – coaching uh when she was in the second grade and she was a second grader playing up with fourth graders if that tells you anything uh she has always had just such a high iq for the game and um i mean you could you could blindfold her and she could still she could still hit the shots uh it's that natural that it it is that natural massive amounts of repetition that that girl has put in uh, all these kids have put in so much work uh, with their game. So, but yeah, those are three to definitely keep your eyes on. Excellent. And, uh, Angie, what do you, and Haley can answer this question too, mm-hmm. as, a, as a former, both of you are former players on, on the women's circuit. Uh, tell me a little bit mm-hmm. about what makes, in your opinion, why is the girls basketball scene so good in not only in our area mm-hmm. here, Haley, but also Angie over in your area. What makes the girls' game? What has impressed you the most about? Like we've both seen players on the mm-hmm. circuit, PGA circuit, yeah. and so you, Angie. What, what are some of the things that impress you guys the most about the girls' game right now? Haley? Um, how aggressive they are. You know, I don't normally talk about you know what separates women's men's and women's basketball, but you know you always hear about you know the differences and the changes that they make. But women's basketball, you know. We're getting up there. I hate to tell everybody, but 
we're getting we're getting our name out there, and I love it. You know, uh, just getting on the just simply just getting on like an app, Instagram or something, just seeing women's basketball. You know, and I'm not you know uh, I love basketball, men, women. You know, but it's just good seeing that women's basketball is becoming more uh, noticeable around the world. <laughs> it really popular. is, you know, popular. Yeah. yeah. But just how, um, just how aggressive we are, just how, you know, how much we love the game. Uh, I love, I love, I love watching women's basketball, you know, it's interesting. So Angie. Man, I mean, I, I'm going to date myself here. So I played basketball for Watkins Memorial and am a proud graduate of uh, Watkins Memorial High School back in 1994. And, and let me tell you, the game, women's basketball, Ohio girls basketball, I feel like has just, it is, it's booming. Um, it and is. not that it wasn't back during that time, but there's so many more opportunities that these girls have that I didn't, that I didn't have. Um, I mean, starting with AAU, like you had like maybe a few teams uh, now, like there's tons, <laughs> hundreds yeah. of teams, uh, you know, it's, hundreds, it's hundreds crazy, them, yeah. you know, walking into a gym yes. and just seeing it filled, the gym just filled with it. Yep. I think, I think trainers, I think that's been a huge change. Um, again, there wasn't, there wasn't trainers that I could go to back right. during that time. Like I was, I was my own trainer. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying that, that kids aren't like that today because, because they are, but there's just, there's so many more resources out there now. Um, I, but yeah, central Ohio basketball, I feel like has always been pretty special uh, back from the, the, the Dave butcher era of, of Pickerington, um, he won a he won a couple you know, games. He he won a couple games and and a few championships. Uh, yeah. But it, it's just, um, yeah, there's strong basketball and um, these girls have a passion. I mean, they're playing ball all year round. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, that's something that was different that you didn't see so much back when I played. Yeah, when I played. A lot of kids play two and three sports. Again, not that that doesn't happen now. Right. But there's more specialized sports now. Exactly. And that goes in, it, that goes for volleyball, it goes for softball and other areas. So my question is, Angie, do you still have game? That's my question. Do you still have game? Hey, she and, was telling me. Wait a minute. And, you, are, and are you ready for an Angie Haley one-on-one -on -one for minute. charity? Wait I'm, a minute. I'm calling wait her right now. Two, Angie and Haley one-on-one -on -one for charity. I'm going to throw something in here. Two things I know. Yes. I watched Facebook, and I saw her play some in her, in her driveway. Yeah. But two, Brooks Hall and her had a challenge throwdown at the OHSAA, and they had to go play. And I think Brooks was, was a little scared. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean – I'm just saying, I mean, maybe we need to get Brooks on here. Maybe we should. I do believe that I was pretty much on fire with, with, with shooting the rock. And I did hold my own against Mr. O, Mr. Ohio basketball. So I felt pretty good with that, especially considering that he's like a foot and a half taller than me. But nearly everybody is at least a foot taller than me. We so. need to have a TKDS Oh, no. Charity <laughs> challenge. Here we go. A three Haley on three. Bacon and Angie Sater. <laughs> oh, jeez. Are you up for it, Haley? <laughs> sure. Angie, you know what, what are you with... saying, Angie? What are you saying? When let's, they do let, that, Angie, we, you know, we always have problems that something the fans make happen in, out in the park I, at uh, Frickers in the parking yeah. lot. <laughs> bring bring the basket. We'll be there. No, no, I don't yeah. want to tear my other ACL. Yeah, but, I don't want you to either. <laughs> but I'm cool with it. I'm, I'm cool with it. Hey, I don't know. When uh, we were, you were passing me the ball in the gym, I don't know where we were, Columbus. I was, you know, those passes were pretty pretty smooth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, as a point guard, she's supposed to be able to pass the ball. Yeah. As a scorer, <laughs> as a, as a scorer Haley, you're supposed to be able to score. <laughs> yeah. And you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that day over in Indiana? You yeah. remember that day? Yeah, I do. You remember that day? I'll tell you about that, Angie, sometime. I, <laughs> it, 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 you may go running scared, I think. I'm not sure, but there's a possibility that you may say, I don't want none. <laughs> I'm not sure. Hey, all I have to say is I'm thinking that maybe Jim DeBelt messed up on not having me on his 
on his like list of players to watch back in the 90s. We got to take a break. We, we, we really need to take a commercial <laughs> break on that note. Angie, I appreciate you staying on with Thank us and you. having some fun with us. I appreciate yes. it. And we are going to yep. set that up. I'm going to yep. make sure it happens. <laughs> it's going to happen. I don't know when. Maybe state tournament. It's going to happen. Angie Sater yep. has been with us from uh, Prep Girl Hoops, the Columbus Rider. Follow her on, on Twitter and also Prep Girls Hoops. She does a great job in Central Thank you, Ohio. Angie. Thanks a lot, Angie. Hey, thank you so much. We'll take a break and be right back here on Behind the Arc on the TKDS Sports Network and the iHeartRadio podcast. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether and we're back here on the TKDS Sports Network. And if you're listening on the iHeartRadio app, you're listening to the podcast of Behind the Arc. Jim DeBelt, Haley Bankin, and right now uh, we have Coach Melissa Colby on hold. So uh, Coach Colby, just hang tight for a minute. We had some difficulties. Hopefully, Riley Sagister is on with us. Riley, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Kevin Fowler does it again. How you doing, my friend? How are you out there in Tri-Village? Hey, how are you guys? Great. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for being patient on our first show. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, um, so, obviously, we went through a lot of your accolades already, but one of the biggest things that I want to talk about is your senior season. Um, you know, everybody loves their senior year. There's so many memories to be made. We'll talk about your uh, – your other two big seniors with you here in a minute. Right now, let's just talk about your senior season and what have you been doing to prepare yourself for the best season you could have? Yeah, um, I've added a lot of lifting, a lot more lifting to my schedule, um, along with working out every day with my trainer down in uh, Moraine and just implement, implementing various things that I needed to work on from last season. Um, other than that, that's about it. Sweet. So let's talk about your big summer with uh, West Virginia Thunder, you know, winning the Under Armour National Championship. So uh, run me through that a little bit. You know, it took you a lot to probably. Go ahead. Uh, it took you a lot to probably get there, obviously, to win a big championship. So tell me about that. Yeah, so I actually had the opportunity to make the switch um, to the Thunder program, which opened up a lot of doors for me to be able mm -hmm. to further my playing career and winning the national championship. I, I had no idea that I would be in that <laughs> position, but um, it was incredible. I mean, getting to play against the top players in the country right. um, from everywhere and having the sidelines packed every game and um, being it able to be able... more to when you see all those yeah. sidelines packed and see more people, you know, pouring in, it just makes you want to win it even more. So Exactly. And I had was fortunate to be on the same team as some of the top players in the country. Right. Um, and playing for Scott Johnson was obviously quite the honor. Mm -hmm. um, he always supported and believed in me. So that was always good. Scotty does a great job. And, you know, he has, he's arguably, you know, he definitely one of the top, I should say definitely one of the top uh, directors in the country. You know, he, he does some tremendous things. One he of gets, the big ones for yeah, sure. he, and he gets you guys prepared for the big stage. And most importantly, he gets you guys to be seen by coaches at the next level. Now, I know you had already been, you had already verbal to Marshall quite a while ago, mm -hmm. a little while ago. So you went into the summer kind of a little bit stress free as far as not having yeah. to yeah. impress people like that. But playing for Coach Johnson and, and the entire staff of the Thunder has to be something you'll never forget. Absolutely. It's um, moments that I'll cherish forever. Excellent. 
heading into your senior year at Tri Village, you know, you guys have had quite a quite a run the last several years. I mean, way back. I mean, talking 10, 15 years ago, you guys have been successful. But now it's your turn. You, Morgan Hunt, Tori Richards, three big seniors that want to go out on top. You know, right. your first goal is obviously to win the WOAC and then go from there, mm-hmm. make a nice tournament run. Talk about how fun it is to play with those other two seniors who are both in their own rights, very quality players. No, it's, um, we've been playing together since middle school, even younger than that. And it's just nice because we've played so much together that we all know our strengths and weaknesses and we know games. Um, all of us have played in big game experiences and have had tournament experiences and tight situations that we've had to overcome and like you said, this year we're just trying to get over the hump and achieve what we've been we set out four years ago to do. So hopefully this can be the year. And it's going to be a year that you know obviously everybody knows. Um, you know to get through Tri Village, they have to somehow defend you three plus some good upper cl- underclassmen that are coming up mm-hmm. through the program. Um, so obviously your number one focus is take care of the league and go from there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Definitely. You know, there's big expectations for this year for your, you know, like Jim said, you know, you already made 375 made threes in your career. Uh, so that's pretty impressive. You know, we like to shoot the ball, don't we? I, I love shooting the ball. <laughs> I know you love shooting the ball. <laughs> so uh, what is your expectations for this season? You know, obviously put in that extra time and work, but, you know, being a big leader to the team because, you know, it's a big expectation to play for Tri-Village <laughs> girls basketball. You know, it's huge. Uh, everybody wants to watch you guys play. Everybody wants to see you guys succeed and everything. So tell me about what you and the team have to do to succeed this season. I think it's imperative to bring our younger kids along because we're needing some of them. Um, but to just show them what we're about um, and um, make sure that they feel comfortable and they feel like they can trust us. And, yeah, I think I totally younger agree. kids are here. Right, you have to have trust in your teammates and coaches to yeah. succeed. So back to your uh, made threes, 375 made threes. That's pretty impressive. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Um, it's certainly within reach. Um, <laughs> not all about uh, – I guess it's for me it's all about the individual accolades. Um, exactly. But the team. Um, I've really – I've been, uh, been fortunate to be on some really good teams with some really good players. Right. Um, and obviously a great coach that has put me in as many situations to be successful and utilize my strengths. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say kind of goes back to all that. Right. You know, having a good team passing you the ball to get you open and everything. So that definitely helps. Definitely. Absolutely. You know, as as you head into your senior year, um, what kind of, I mean, do you have any other specific goals? I mean, obviously you want to go to state with your team. That's always a goal. It's been your goal since you've been there. You've had great players around you. You still have some great players around you. So, you know, kind of what is individual the goals? yeah yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's and it's okay Any to goal, have it, it's okay to have individual yeah. goals. It's totally fine with that. Everybody mm-hmm. has them. Um, but what what kind of team goals mm-hmm. as a senior leader and maybe you know stepping back outside of that? What kind of individual goals taking away the record that you might right. get? What other kind of goals have you set for yourself this year? Um, I haven't really thought about that yet, but uh, <laughs> I definitely think that um, I want to make this season the most fun for everybody, especially with it being our last season. And some of this will probably be the last time that some of us play with each other. And um, hopefully, um, with that being said, um, obviously a state appearance would probably be the icing on the cake for everyone. I would think um, so too. But I, yeah, I think that I just I don't I want this season to be the most fun that I've had stress free, um, just a fun all around season to be able to enjoy for my senior year. Yeah, you know one thing that uh, and this is kind of a, a question I'm just throwing in, Division Four girls basketball in our area is so good. I, I mean agree. every I agree. year <laughs> Tri Village, Fort Laramie, <laughs> Minster, you know yep. it, Legacy Christian for a couple of years were, were really good. You know, talk about, and and I know this is kind of a tougher question. Talk about how division. I mean, everybody talks division one. Everybody wants to know division one this and division one that, but division four is pretty daggone good. And just talk about the level of basketball. You know, you get to districts on. You know, there's been times, and I've said this before. There's been times that the best teams, the 
I, I remember one year, a couple of years ago, it was you guys, I think Legacy, maybe Minster and Lormy. Yeah, because I went to the Legacy mm. one and uh, all at Tri Butler. Game. Yeah, and I, I said the, the I said these are the four best Division four teams in the state I, in this I agree, gym. Yeah. So I mean, how tough is it just to get out of the Division four districts? You know, on forward to the state. I mean, it's got to be tough every year. Mm -hmm. It is. It's everybody's very well prepared. Everybody knows everybody and everyone is very well prepared for everything. Um, everyone um, on our side is always solid and they always have a good game plan going in. Um, we play each other and we know each other so well that it's um, often hard to come by baskets even um, because of how well everybody knows each other. But it's the game. Those are the toughest games. Um, in my opinion, to get through is the, that regional. That's a tough regional. There's no question about that. So, Riley Sagister, thank you so much for being patient you, with us. Yeah. And uh, yeah. thanks for joining us on our first show. I mean, congratulations on everything you've done so far. Yeah. And best of luck. Thank you yeah. to watch her this season and see how much she succeeds. Yeah, best of luck to your best year yet. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Riley. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Jim DeBelt, Haley Bankin here on Behind the Arc, and we'll be right back hopefully with Coach Melissa Colby from Wittenberg right after this commercial break. Meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one. Whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. I turned everything off because I didn't know what I was supposed to do, so I was like... We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. You can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. You can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits. And we're back uh, for another segment on Behind the Arc. Jim DeBelt alongside the real legend of the show, Haley Bankin. And uh, with us now is going to be the brand new coach at Wittenberg University. But she's definitely not a strange face 
to the university. Melissa Colby, the new coach for the Tigers, formerly played for Wittenberg. She also coached at Mount St. Mary's, EKU, East Carolina, and most recently UC, among others. And Coach Colby, thanks a lot for joining us here on Behind the Arc. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. So I guess the initial question is, what's it feel like to be back home? You know, it's a little surreal. Um, I get to walk into the arena I've played in every single day. And, uh, you know, every time I come on campus, it seems like a new day. And But at the same time, it brings me back to a lot of the memories I had at WIT. Obviously, I know it's a special place, was able to win a lot of basketball games there and be a part of creating a lot of memories, which has been fun. Um, but it's just, it's been even better than I imagined it would be, to be honest. So so as a player at Wittenberg, you had an, a lot of accomplishments and a lot of honors, you know, uh, being named the most outstanding player, first team all-conference as a senior. You also won uh, three NCAC titles. Uh, I'm sure you expect that tradition of excellence to continue as a head coach, correct? Yes. You know, it's uh, I was very fortunate to be a part of some very good teams when I was at Wittenberg. You know, we definitely – I came when I came in as a freshman. We had a certain level of expectation for the program. Um, they had actually won. Uh, they had had two back-to-back seasons where they had not lost a conference game, and so I think in our very first team meeting, the upperclassmen were like, "Well, y'all are not about to be the class that messes this up." So, <laughs> right, you know, we yeah. knew from the beginning, from our very first conditioning session, what the expectation was, what Wittenberg women's basketball meant, what it meant in our conference and in this region. And, you know, we wanted to be a part of moving that forward. And as a player to be able to play for Pam Evan Smith and to be able to be a part of three conference championships, you know, and understand what it was like to play with great players. That was um, something that definitely helped cultivate my coaching career. Um, You know, Pam put me in a lot of leadership situations and she kind of pushed me into coaching. So to be able to come back and be that same influence and mentor to to my players and to my future players is something that's been very exciting. And just to talk with them about these are the expectations. You know, I know where we've been in the recent past, but I know where we should be. Um, Winning championships and being relevant nationally is something that we have conversations about because there's no reason with the facilities we have with who or what Wittenberg is as a school that we can't accomplish all of that. So, you know, uh, I didn't say in the States with that. Yeah. Coach Evans. Oh, that's okay. Coach Evans uh, has done so much. And we, you talked about what she means mm-hmm. to the program. What did she, you know, what did she mean for women's basketball? She was like one of the biggest, most well-respected coaches and people mm-hmm. in in the country during her entire time, Mm -hmm. what did she mean for the game? You know, I think those who met her, you know, they, I think her spirit was left with them because of how positive a person she is. You know, she obviously pushed us hard in the basketball court, um, but just really cared about us as people and cared about us being the best person, the best student, the best person in our community that we could be. Um, and I feel like all of my teammates took that with us. And if you look at kind of what we've done after Wittenberg, you know, a lot of us are teachers or coaches and, and the lessons she taught us, we've wanted to extend to others and just, you know, the battle she fought with having cancer over the better part of two decades, basically, and still coaching her team. You know, I think that wasn't lost on the community of women's basketball and to, to understand all of the games that she won and the great players that she coached, um, you know, it is nice to know that she's been recognized in the state and throughout, throughout the game of women's basketball. So to be able to be a part of her tree and to be a part of her legacy with that means so much to me. So you've, you've coached at the division one level. You obviously played at the division three level, you know, mm-hmm. as, as a coach for a division three women's basketball program with no athletic scholarships to give, Tell me, mm-hmm. sell, sell me as a parent to consider Division three basketball for my child. Okay. Well, I will say, um, you know, the first thing that I kind of tackle is we, we discuss the cost of tuition and actually paying for school. That's one of the first conversations I have with recruits and with their parents because um, it is different. You know, a lot of people play basketball in hopes of getting scholarship money to help pay for college. You know, I think that people kind of underestimate 
what the value or what value there is in a, in a division three education and in the experience of playing college basketball and how that can help prepare you for life after basketball. Um, you know, I will say that when you kind of look at the nuts and bolts of everything, you have to look at financial aid and what packages they will put together because specifically for us at Wittenberg, we do put together great packages, but just when you look at what you want out of an experience, um, from a college experience, whether you want to go to a larger institution, smaller institution, whether you want to play college sports or you just want to kind of be a part of a college community, all of those things should weigh into your decision. And sometimes, yes, you may have to pay a little bit more on the front end to have those experiences, but what you get out of that college experience is invaluable. You know, the relationships you build, the networking you're able to create through a Division three institution because of the smaller class sizes. Um, and then for me, you know, we're recruiting a wide range of student athletes, to be honest, you know, some that are getting division one interest and division two interest and some student athletes that know they want to go division three. I think, you know, what you, what you want out of your experience, how successful you want to be, how many games you want to win, the ability to compete for a national championship, all of that should play into your decision when you look at a division three school, um, you know, trying to find the best fit for you where you feel like you're going to be taken care of fully supportive have you know a strength staff and a coaching staff and professors in a college community that's going to support you sometimes that that is worth a little bit extra money you know we're having to pay something on the back end um because you are going to have a different experience but it's also going to prepare you in a way different than a lot of other institutions wouldn't because you get to have that balanced student athlete experience because you do get to compete and network at a different level um you know and really just be a part of something different that a lot of student athletes can't be a part of so that's an excellent answer. Yeah, I agree. Very, very, man, very man, I'm sold. Where do I sign the papers? I, <laughs> can I go play? I put on a dress. <laughs> hey, now the question is, can you make? Can you? Sh how will you shoot the three? Because that's going to be a big well, part of our game this year. So I can shoot the if you're camera a from suspects. We I might be in trouble. I can shoot the camera from the mezzanine and make sure you guys look good. Is that good enough? Okay, there you go. There, oh, there you go. Hey, We're good. I will sign you up. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. This person right yep. here next to me. She can shoot threes if you need help. Hey, okay? and it's she a four-year school. Right, well, you come come on down anytime. So <laughs> we may you come know, I, we may I, come I, to practice sometime to you, visit you. You guys. know, I love doing games there good. too. We we got to make sure we get some of their games on the network we again should. this I year a, with with a new I coach. I did a shootout there one time. No, actually, it was an AAU tournament. And I love. We played in yeah. just the side gym. It was just oh one yeah, of, they got the little side I gym. We it. did. I we, love playing. We there. we yeah. will support you in all your youth programs and high school programs you bring there, like we did to the other athletic director and everybody else that was there before you. Okay. And we will come to a couple of your games on the network for you. Give you guys some love. Let's do it. Let's now do it. I'm going to hold you last to year. that. We will. <laughs> we did it last year. Okay. Yeah, tell Brian we're okay. going to be there. Okay, I will. I'll get y'all some Wittenberg t-shirts too. So I'm hey. going to represent t -shirts. for me. Hey, this girl here has so. more t-shirts than anybody I've ever met <laughs> in my enough. life. Never, never enough t-shirts. <laughs> there you never go. Never enough t-shirts. No. Exactly. Nope. One for every day of the week. So. Yeah. But no, I would love to have y'all and love to have y'all meet the team and, you know, yeah. just see where we're building here because I'm super excited. So. For sure. So speaking of that, uh, speaking up your, you know, upcoming season, what are your thoughts about uh, who you have, like, coming back as your top performers, uh, top players, you know, just your whole team in general? What are your thoughts about the upcoming season? You know, I'm very excited about the group that I have coming back. We graduated quite a few seniors. Um, there were six seniors total because we had some super seniors and then we had some regular uh, fourth year seniors. So a little bit of a leadership vacuum, you know, as seniors do, they really have a, they're able to lead their team a lot of times. And they led this team with, with, in conjunction with Tamika to a conference championship and to an NCAA tournament appearance, which is huge. Um, you know, the thing that I've told this team since I first got on campus is that they know what it feels like now. And that's the hardest thing is to teach a team what it feels like to win what it takes to win a championship and you know i tell them all the time once you climb that ladder and cut down those nets you don't want to go backwards you know that's your goal every year you want to obviously grow from that and now we want to win games in the ncaa tournament but just really excited about the work they put in this summer you know they'll call me after they make some shots or they'll get in the gym and work out or we'll facetime and i'll talk about stuff that they've done that week and 
I feel like they're all very invested in the future of this program and really all wanting to leave a legacy, which I'm so excited about because that's what it is. You know, at the end of the day at Wittenberg, we hang banners. Um, men's basketball has won national championships. Volleyball has won a national championship. Football, national championships. And, you know, to be in that culture for our players to understand that this is the standard of our athletic department and this is what the teams here do they they understand that because now they've cut down nets and they want to build on that and they want to be the next program to hang hang uh excuse me hang a banner in pam evan smith arena so you know they've been putting in a lot of work so with i have let me think 11 returners you know and then i have 10 freshmen and transfers coming in and they've done a lot of team building stuff this summer, you know, different accountability things. They've had different check-ins with each other. We've been making videos to share kind of who you are and where you're from and what you're about. And just really excited to get all of them on campus so we can all do work on stuff face-to-face. You know, I'm very big on team building, team bonding. Um, and I know that they want to grow as a unit. And I think that we'll, you'll really be able to see that in the chemistry we have on the floor and how hard we play together. And then, you know, have a lot of good pieces, a lot of people that can put the ball in the basket. And I want to play fast and very up-tempo, and I like to score a lot of points. So, you know, they've all been very committed to making a lot of shots this summer, shooting a lot of threes. So you can, I, I would, uh, I'm going to be interested in some horse games when y'all come to campus. So Haley, Haley, oh, no. said, I'm, Haley said she's down for that. Yeah. I don't know okay. if we want Kevin. Now, Kevin, question, Kevin may ride a horse. In, I, I was just going to say, I'll bring the horse. No problem. There's one around the corner from me. I don't know if I'm playing no horse. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm, um, well, I'm down for all that. Yes, that would be exciting. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So. Um, yeah, so and I guess a question that would go remiss without me asking is, tell everybody about the steamer. You know, it's I, I walk in there. Every time I walk a recruit in, it's like the wow factor is unbelievable. You know, just the commitment that our alumni and specifically Wes Bates has made to this university and this athletic department. And then, you know, Brian's vision to keep moving everything forward. It's unlike any Division three facility in the country. And, you know, I just came from UC and we didn't have an indoor football facility there. Well, when I was there, I think they're working on it now. But I mean, that facility really rivals a lot of Division one facilities and you know, it's, Good. it just shows again, how important athletics is to our university and how we're going to give all of our student athletes the best of everything. And I got so. a great tour of all your guys' facilities, the indoor track with the indoor mm-hmm. court, and stuff, phenomenal, the swimming pool, the water polo team, everything. It's mm-hmm. phenomenal what they actually got there that some colleges don't have. Absolutely. So and phenomenal. It kind of sells itself. Y'all like doesn't. this. It, you know, it really does. And that's the thing. I think, you know, Wittenberg campus in general sells itself, you know, our academic prestige sells itself. And now with all of the athletic facilities we have, I mean, we realistically have everything that we need to compete for a national championship. Um, And you'll like this, Haley, we did just get a second shooting gun. So now we have one in both (laughs) channels. So the players are super excited about that. And Melissa, I am too, so. we're, I, I'm, she's going to want me to drive her there tonight. So you better open the doors, <laughs> open the gym doors. We're okay. on our way. <laughs> there you go. Just let me know. I'll swipe y'all in. So. All right, sweet. But, Excellent. Yeah. Coach Melissa Colby, thanks a lot. You know, Thank you, you so and I much. go back a long way. I appreciate all of your support over the years from wherever you coached. And mm-hmm. I am very, very happy to have you back home. Well, thank you. It is great to be here. And it was, I appreciate y'all having me on and I look forward to us having lots more conversations. I yeah. think we'll have a lot more conversation and we'll get the lens on them a lot more this year yeah. too. Well, we'll, well, I wouldn't Definitely. mind going out and hitting a couple of your games. We did last yeah. year and yeah. Haley and I probably mm-hmm. do the game. So and we did it as a test last year, just to see how it was, how we knew what you guys were doing, trying to get Brian to know that we want to do more. Mm-hmm. And there were some complications with the media stuff, but I think we can work that out this year and, and figure some stuff out and make it happen. I think your conference Absolutely. doesn't doesn't your conference have um, like all don't they stream their games already in the conference? So mm-hmm. it, it'd probably have to be like yeah, a non conference well, game or something. They, well, they stream within there. They can stream it to their site. But the point is, they're putting it on Facebook and stuff. So for me, it was oh, a yeah. loss leader. It was more about giving the school and the the community and the coach and the players exposure. So it wasn't that I was making any money mm-hmm. or trying to, but we tried to get them on the network to. Ex- expose what's going on in the marketplace for our entrance into college was with Wittenberg and uh, Wilberforce and some different places there in the area last year and with Edison. So this year we're going to go deeper. 
Especially in Springboro area, so. Yeah, definitely, Sweet. Melissa, we definitely would, would like to. I mean, I think I can speak for all three of us that cool. we would like to come out and do a couple of your non-conference early games, even before the high school season starts and things get busy for us. Because Haley and I's mm-hmm. main job is we are the voice of the Tip City Red Devils. So we will do all the Tip City home winter sports. Yep. Yep. So mm-hmm. on days like in November, because our season here doesn't start till the middle of November or mm-hmm. s- third week, right. maybe we can come mm-hmm. up, you guys open up early. Maybe we can hit a couple of your non-conference games and do the games mm-hmm. for you guys. Our tournaments that you guys might bring Absolutely. in that, you know, whether they be high school or college tournaments that aren't conference tournaments mm-hmm. during the so – maybe all interest and all that and working with you about that. Yeah, let, let, let's, let's, keep that, let's keep that conversation going, Melissa, if you could. And just talk Absolutely, to the team and yes. the coaches. Give them do a coaches yeah. show up there with her and their team. They got a yeah. great backdrop banner. Yeah, they can do one of them. Mm-hmm. Let's make it happen, Coach. What yeah. do you say? All right, that sounds perfect. I'm Excellent. looking forward to that. Awesome, Coach so. Melissa Colby from Wittenberg University. She's home, and She's we're glad home. we're glad right. to have her. Yep. So thanks a lot, Coach, and uh, be- best Thank of luck. Thank you so much. And we will see you in November at the uh, Pam Evans Smith Arena. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. We'll be back Thank for you. our next segment after our break. Jim DeBelt, Haley Bankin, Kevin Fowler on the producer on the TKDS Sports Network. We'll be right back. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. So you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. You can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. You can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. You can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. You can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. You can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. You can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game. And we're back here on the Behind the Arc 
segment number five on the uh, initial show. And Haley, real quickly before we jump to our next guest, how exciting is this for you? Is this is this kind of what you expected or better? Yeah, going into it, I was a little nervous, you know, just like broadcasting again, you know, not again, but starting off broadcasting, I was nervous. But once I got the hang of it, you know, you just get comfortable with it. But uh, I had, love it. We've I, had great guests, and we've got another one coming yes, up. Yes, we do. Uh, a longtime friend of mine. I don't know, Megan, how long ago this was. Probably 2005, maybe. How old were you then, Haley, in 2005? Probably four. Four. Four years yeah, old. Four. Yeah, So Megan Frazee, losing her, is um, – on the guest now, and, and she is actually a young lady who, like I said, I met during her high school days. Okay, Haley was two. Yeah. <laughs> and she played at Xenia <laughs> Christian with her triplet sisters, Mariah and Molly. And that was a big thing back then. Everybody wanted to watch them play. And they did not disappoint. They made it to the Final Four. There's a game coming up that Haley's going to talk about that was huge in the area. Uh, her and her two sisters all went to Liberty University on full-ride basketball scholarships. And then Megan took her game to the next level. She played in the WNBA in San Antonio and overseas. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome back to the Dayton area, my good friend, Megan Frazee. Megan, welcome to the show. Oh, we lost you. Hold on, Megan. I think, Megan, are you there? Hang loose. Megan, are you there? Her microphone's still off. Oh, her microphone is off, according. Um, do you want her just to call back in? Yeah, just, just call back in. Hey, Megan, if you can hear me, just call back in, and we'll get you right back on. We'll wait for you. I think she's trying to check now. Go ahead and uh, if you can you hear me okay if you can hear me go ahead and just hang up and call right back in and hopefully your mic will be on. All right, is that working now? Yes, I okay, gotcha. Awesome. Hey, Good. did you hear that great introduction? Or do I have to do I have to tell you how great you are again? I mean, did you get that I actually that did hear it. Okay. <laughs> so we're good. We can skip that. Okay. I, I know you don't like that kind of stuff. But, Megan, thank you so much for joining us. You know, you and I go back a long, long way, back to back to the days of, I think, the Dayton Metro and and then yes. to uh, um, Xenia Christian. But before that, you were homeschooled, and I forgot where. Did you go to a homeschool, or were you actually homeschooled before you went to Xenia Christian as a senior? Yeah, so I was homeschooled eighth grade through 11th grade. And so unorthodox a little bit my high school playing career. I played two years at Xenia Nazarene Christian School. And then my junior year actually did not play anywhere. And then senior year went to Xenia Christian. Okay, so and I, I know you heard me tell you that Haley's going to talk about one of your biggest mm -hmm. games during your senior year here in a minute. But let's just talk about some of your other biggest memories from your high school basketball career. Obviously playing one year. Um, at an OHSA school like Xenia Christian, um, how did how things go? How did you fit? How did you guys fit in there when you guys got there right away? And boy, you guys sure left a lot of people on notice when you guys were seniors making that long run. Yeah, you know, I think really for myself, and I can speak for my sisters too. But one of the things we really appreciated going to Xenia Christian was just the fact that we felt like we really were welcomed by the community and by the school. And you know, when you have three three girls coming in, getting a lot of playing time, and coming to a small Christian school like that, there could be some mixed emotions and mixed feelings with maybe some girls whose playing time is getting taken and things like that. But we really didn't feel any animosity or anything like that. From the beginning, we were, we were really welcomed. And it was neat as we made that run to the state to be able to go there and just the crowd turnout was awesome. And just fun to see the, the school spirit rally around all of us. and. So I think those are really fond memories. And then just being able to go to a school that I think really helped prepare me for college as well was important also. Excellent. So um, yeah, obviously uh, Haley um, has the duty of talking about one of your most exciting games. Yeah. 
So, you know, one of the was a big highlight regular season game uh, as a senior against CJ in the Nutter Center. Uh, tell me about the atmosphere there. It was probably crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was. You know, it's, it's interesting because when I took the job at Wright State, that was one of the mm-hmm. things I was kind of reminiscing a little bit about was, yeah. you know, now, okay, I'm coaching in the Nutter Center and I got to play in the Nutter Center when I was in high school. But that was a really, really fun game, obviously, as you uh, have heard about, I'm sure. But just being able to play against some of the top talent in Ohio at the time and and really being able to play on the college floor was a good experience. But yeah, neat to see the community come out and support all of us local girls and, and being able to see just the game continue to expand and, and come on you know to that level. It was just, I think, an awesome experience and, and one that I'll never forget. Just wish we could have come out on the right. winning side. Definitely a memory you'll never forget. So you know, if I remember Absolutely. right, weren't there like weren't there? And I could be exaggerating because I tend to do that sometimes. <laughs> weren't there like six or seven thousand people there at that game? I, you know, I don't know the for exact some, number. For some reason, it seems like the place was just ridiculously ridiculously was. crowded for a high school for a girls game. It was, yeah. And it I was think really, that was really a, great atmosphere. They might have had like I'm gonna think maybe Maria Getty that year. I'm thinking of, at CJ and. Aisha uh, Jefferson. Aisha mm-hmm. Jefferson. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Haley, those were – that was some basketball there. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that's big girls basketball there. I'm telling you, that was a lot of Yes. Fun. So, uh, you know, playing with your sisters, you know, that has to be another memories, you know, made, uh, you know, at the college level. Tell me about, you know, playing right beside your sisters at the college level. Sure. So, you know, for me, it's kind of like growing up. I didn't didn't know anything different, right, having two sisters and – really two built-in best friends for me, but that was part of, you know, the decision-making process going into figuring out, okay, am I going to go to college with my sisters, not with my sisters, but that was really important for me to be able to continue that if I could, and so um, all three of us, you know, we went to Liberty, and I really have super fond memories of my time there, not only as an athlete, but also as a student, and Mm -hmm. we were able to be pretty successful there. They still are very successful, but being able to go to the NCAA tournament three times out of my four years and really, I feel like developing myself as an athlete and, and being able to play on big stages against some great competition and then being able to see some of those girls that I played against collegiately, be able to play against them or with them professionally was just a great, I think, experience. And being able to play with my sisters, I mean, having played with them my whole life, we knew kind of the ins and outs of each, of each other's game. And so, unfortunately, all three of us tore ACLs in college and so different years, so that was a little bit uh, uncanny. But the times that we were able to be out there together, I, I will never forget. And especially my sophomore year, we were able to start all three of us uh, several of the games, which was a lot of fun, and I'll cherish that time. And I remember my grandma telling me before I went to college, you know, college is going to go by so fast, and, and it did. And now that I'm on the other side of it, several years removed, I can definitely see that. But um, wouldn't trade that time with my sisters and so thankful for it. And, you know, it's kind of strange. Actually, good strange is you had a great player, three great players from Xenia Christian all go to Liberty. And then fast forward 10, 15 more years, you had a another big-time player from at the time, now Legacy Christian, also followed that path, Emma Hess, mm-hmm. who's at Liberty. So, and I don't know if you've seen her or know much about her, Megan, but she's an outstanding player from, from Legacy Christian and is out at Liberty right now. Sure, yeah. I've, I actually have not been able to meet her yet in person, but um, I still watch a lot of Liberty's games during the season. So I was able to catch her some last year and excited to see what she does this year as well. You know, you went from Liberty, then you played professionally. Um, you played for the Silver Stars. And then you play overseas. Tell me a little bit about your professional career. And by the way, just in case people didn't, I I think I failed to mention this, but this segment on the show is called Where Are They Now? Mm -hmm. So I bring back somebody that was a great player, and she was more than great, Megan. You know know, know how I feel about you, but, um, you know, you bring back a former player um, and just kind of talk about what they're doing now, reminisce a little bit back to their career, and we'll talk about what she's doing now after the break, after our next break. But, you know, let's go back to your professional career. You had, you know, I'm sure a lot of fun, a lot of ups and downs playing professionally, both in the country, in the States and overseas. Talk about that. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, being able to get drafted to play in the WNBA, I think that was, you know, something I, growing up, I didn't expect that necessarily, but 
Um, very thankful for the opportunity and going down to San Antonio, I think it was a perfect fit because it was great to play with a lot of veteran teammates. And so I was truly the only rookie on the team for my first year. And so diving in and getting to, you know, play alongside now, a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't know them other than on the coaching side now, but Becky Hammond, Ruth Riley, oh, you yeah, know, legends. Sophia Young. Yeah. yeah, a lot a lot of legends. Yeah. Vicki Johnson. It's funny now because when I'm watching the WBA, seeing them as coaches has been a lot of fun to, to see that. But um, just really learned a lot and a great opportunity to be able to meet, I think for me, what I enjoyed the most while there were hard times and, and of course, a lot of joyful times, just being able to meet a lot of great people and as you mentioned, you know, playing in the States with San Antonio, but then going overseas and playing for seven years. And so predominantly I played in Turkey and then one season in Poland and one in Israel. But through all those seasons, highs and lows, um, getting to see the world, get paid to do something that I love was a dream come true and something that I don't take for granted, especially once I hung up my playing shoes and, and now in the coaching aspect of it. But um, I feel like, you know, the Lord allowed me to, to be able to play in those different countries with those different people and has helped to develop me as now as a coach and, you know, better me as a person as well. Excellent. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember a lot of great moments, you know, with you on the court and, uh, you know, cherish those times because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, we don't get to see great talent like that very no, often. We don't. And, and uh, you know, just I, I, I was talking the other day about how I wish people in and I'm going to say my era because I'm 80s, 90s, but people in my era, Katie and and uh, Tamika, Lynette Roth, and in your era, yourself, Allison Bales, Megan Duffy, mm -hmm. I would love to see you guys in today's game. I would just like to, I mean, I don't know, I'd just like to see how, you know, I know, you know the old joke is, Michael Jordan, can you compete? How many did you, could you score this in today's game? He goes, I don't yeah. know, I'm 62 years or whatever, six years old. But, sure. But back in the day, I, I mean, I, I still to think about this sometimes. Older players come back and play would be. I would like to cool. see you know in their prime, mm -hmm. like to see them come back because I want I want you Haley and players <laughs> in your era to see what paved the way for you guys yeah, today. Of course, you know. So we'll take a break. Sure. Megan, a crazy losing her is with us now. We'll be right back after a short break. You're watching on TKDS Sports Network. We'll be right back. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one. Whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this and we're back here on the TKDS Sports Network, Behind the Arc, Jim DeBelt, Haley Benkin, and we are with Megan Frazy losinger who's the assistant coach right now at Wright State University. Congratulations. I know we haven't talked a whole lot since you got the job, you know, what, last year. I think it was last year, maybe. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say Wright State, like over here at the Nutter Center? That's, them, that's, that's them the girls place. That play? Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm excited now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you spent a few years coaching college basketball different places, what made you decide to dive into this craziness of the coaching world? You know, I think for me, diving into the coaching world, I really saw a good example in my dad. And my dad, I was blessed to, to have him coach me and the rest of my siblings growing up. And then even in AAU and some in high school. And so just being able to see the balance that he had being my dad, but also pushing me as, as a coach and, and a dad as well. And so... I really saw the opportunity to be able to make an impact in, in people's lives as, as he did in mine. And so I just felt like once I finished playing basketball, it just kind of made sense to at least give coaching a try and, and see where it went. And, and I've really enjoyed it so far. It's been, been fun, the different places that I've been at to kind of be able to, you know, I've been obviously in different roles, um, all places, but great to, to be able to give back and, and hopefully, 
you know, I always tell girls as, as I recruit them, like hopefully our, our goal is, you know, to, as coaches to better you as basketball players, but really more importantly as people. And I think those two kind of go hand in hand and, and it's great to be able to have that opportunity. Well, I'm excited that she's at Wright State because that's right down the road from my house. I love to go over to the Nutter Center and do some talking and interviewing with her players. That's a great team over the years. I mean, that's a phenomenal team over the years, basically, in my opinion, since I've been in Ohio. Yeah. Um, I've always known the women's team there has been great. Definitely. Yes, they've, they've had a lot, of, a lot of success, and we're hoping to be able to get back to that, uh, that success as well. So how exciting is it to be back in the same area where you grew up playing um, your high school basketball career? Yeah, you know, it's, it's really honestly surreal to be able to come back to kind of my stomping grounds and, and where I grew up. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's a great opportunity. I, I knew, have known Carrie really for a long time and, and watched her even play in her playing days at Cedarville. And so just there's not a lot of people with, you know, being a wife and a mom and all those things trying to juggle all those hats that I'd want to work with her for, but I knew the opportunity to work with her and and for her would be just a a great fit. And so, you know, it's, it's been good to to kind of see, you know, her coaching style and and work alongside the other assistants as well. So doing all those things, you know, I'm sure it's tough balancing coaching, traveling and being a mom, like how challenging is it for like in your mom's perspective and you're like, mom mode being in your mom mode how hard is it to balance um coaching traveling and then just being a mom as well yeah I think that that it can be very challenging Mm -hmm. I have a three-year-old boy and a five-year-old boy so my oldest will be in kindergarten this year which is hard to believe but Mm -hmm. (laughs) um wow first off I'd like to say that I have a rock star of a husband and he does a phenomenal job filling in the gaps when I'm you know on a long road trip or even this summer, um, just we, we spent a lot of time in the office as we tried to kind of uh, had to get a lot of new players within our team and program. And so um, very thankful for him. And he's a teacher, so it's great, too, because he has the summers completely off and not really off, I guess, but helping with the boys. Right. But, uh, you know, I think also working alongside Carrie as she is a mom as well. She has three three kids. And so I knew that she would kind of get that balance. But it is, you know, sometimes it's, you have kind of two sides of the coin where I'm so thankful to be coaching division one and and being able to have that opportunity. But then also with that comes, you know, a little bit different travel schedule than maybe NAIA division two, division three. So it's just a give or take a little bit, but so far, you know, it's, it's worked out the different places that I've been coaching. And, and so I'm very thankful for just the flexibility um, that, that coaching menu, you know, there's ebbs and flows as with any job, but then also just having my my husband alongside, and then another reason getting into this area, my parents live about an hour and 15 minutes from Dayton, and so they're able to come and, and help out if needed, and then also they're huge supporters of Wright State as well. Well, I really appreciate Please tell your mom and dad I said hello, and I Montana will. as well. And so um, I uh, appreciate you coming on with us today. It's, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Great catching up with you as always. And sure. um, Haley, do you have anything you want to wrap it up with her about? No, it was just uh, an honor to get to know you a little bit more, you know. Um, it's very interesting to see everything that you've done and accomplished. So, uh, good luck to you, and um, thank you for being on the show. And go Raiders. And go, and go Raiders. Raiders. Well, thank and, you. And I hope, Megan, we can come out and see your team and talk to you as yeah. the assistant coach and the coach and maybe interview some of your team and give you guys some love this year as you rebuild that team and show you guys to our community here in Dayton. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, we're – we're all about fan engagement, community support, and so that would be a great opportunity, I think, for our players and for our team and our program. Excellent. We'd love to see you. You know, I, I can't wait to see you again soon. And uh, Megan Frazy losinger has been with us, uh, formerly of Xenia Christian, Liberty, and several years of professional basketball. Thanks a lot, Megan, for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, guys, we'll be back here for another big segment with Tanisha Benson, the owner and the uh, director of the Ohio Girls Basketball Report. We're going to dig into statewide basketball. When we come back on the TKDS Sports Network, behind the arc, Jim DeBelt, Haley Bankin, stay right there. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day. 
you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big... We're back here in Tip City, Ohio, the home of the Red Devils, where Haley and I will uh, be here quite a bit call it this, and forward year, it. Uh, this year for <laughs> some basketball, and or, I'm sorry, some football, volleyball, and soccer games, a tennis match, golf, cross country, and who knows what else, you know, coming up. But uh, right now, Kevin Fowler is trying to get a hold of Tanisha Benson. But obviously, uh, you know, right now, it, it's, it's going to be an exciting season. And we just found out tonight that thanks to Dave Arbogast, uh, car dealership in Troy slash tip right off the interstate. Eight, I always, seven. I always call it the, uh, the place with the big American flag that yeah. hangs out there by the interstate. They're joining us as a main sponsor for s- some sports this year, tip city football mm-hmm. for sure. And other things along the way, um, pretty exciting to have them with us as we head into the fall. Yeah. I'm, um, it's going to be an exciting fall. I know this, you know, like you said, uh, being here in tip a lot, uh, it's going to be exciting. You know, what's great about that Dave Arbor guess? he's a Buick dealer. And if you watched anything during the double NCA tournament about Buick and their support of women's sports, yes, they were big and the NCAA, sports. I'm excited as I'll get out to have a Buick dealer involved with us as this is the year we're doing a lot of highlighting with yourself and about women in sports and our whole, that, you know, I've been fighting real hard to make sure it's that. So um, we're about ready to call Denise back again. She's going to park the car because she was driving. Okay. And in and out of signal. Kept getting away. Hang in there with us. Girl. We're going to. But I'm really excited to have a Buick dealer on talk women in sports and their support from Buick in general about women in sports, as, especially when we go into basketball. We got volleyball for women right now. And so soccer. Really, and soccer. Tennis. And tennis. Golf. And cross, cross country. country. Like, yeah, we got a lot of women's lot sports of stuff, going on Kevin. right now, man. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. I can never forget I everything. Know. I will tell you something else exciting is I will tell you about our next show. Yeah. Our next show is going to be on a Monday night, the 29th or whatever that Monday is in, in, in August. It's the last Monday of the month. We're going to be doing two shows a month, folks. Haley and I will be. We'll have different guests on um, as we go forward. And uh, we're going to be live next time on a Monday night. At Frickers in Centerville. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's always good food at Frickers. Oh, yeah. Frickers in Centerville, folks. You can come down and say hi to us. You know, she'll sign autographs or whatever it maybe takes. Maybe we'll get some players from some of these teams we talked to in. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah, you know, maybe bring some pen. surprises. Bring your pen, Haley, because you'll be signing some autographs. I'm sure I got to get day. hero cards for you guys, too. Like, oh, my cards. God. Yeah, for sure. Haley, make sure you spell Haley's name right. Because speaking of heroes, somebody that's a, a big into the women's basketball world, somebody who really puts a lot of time and effort into the game, has joined us now, Haley. Someone yep. you and I both know. Yep. Um, Ohio basketball has been known nationally as a state where coaches can recruit a lot of great, talented players. At one point, ranked number three in the country. And uh, OGBR is a staple at that, the Ohio Girls Basketball Report. Tanisha Benson, are you with us? I am. Hi, Jim. Hi, hi Haley. What's up? Kevin's What's up? going here. What's Hello, up? hi guys. What's up, boss? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. This is awesome. This is. is awesome. I'm excited to be on here, uh, talk about some uh, girls basketball in a great state, right? Oh, it's a great state. You and I both know. You know, we've both been in this game for. Well, you played in this game. You and Haley are the players in this in this conversation. I just been <laughs> been I just been here for 38 years. Too long, I think. But you know, no. Haley, you know, Haley's somebody who's. You know, and yourself, both of you guys are a, a strong attribute to the women's game. You know, you've been yeah. at this game for a while. I'm trying to bring yeah. Haley along with me to take over when I, you know, finally step down. I may never step down if I get to keep working with her. Exactly. But, uh, you know, obviously you uh, her days um, in the game involved in some different OGBR mm-hmm. stuff. Sure, t- you know, what about your days 
in the, in the events. I mean, tell me about your experience, Haley, with, with, you know, with the days, Tom Jenkins, the legend, you know, with OGBR. Talk about your days in those events. You know, my first OGBR event was, I think it was down in either Columbus or Cincinnati, and um, it was, I was just getting started to getting in these shootouts, and, you know, I intended your date in shootout, and then I got into, you know, you ta- you introduced me into OGBR. So, like, I started going in there, and the first event, it was – the gym was packed like it was awesome like honestly like the nerves through me was like going in and out of me like I was so nervous but it was so exciting like I had a blast like you you know all the players that I got to meet and college coaches everywhere and and to think we didn't have the interview booth and imagine if we had the interview booth going like we do now for Benson when she does her shootout oh Oh, yeah and you know seeing all those college coaches like you said it was it was incredible you know just it felt like I was being known because you know there was college coaches everywhere, coaches everywhere, players everywhere. It was it was it was a blast. And they're I, good players. You know, they're yeah. all, they all can play. It was organized. It was you know you played a game, play another one. You know, and it was fun. The coaches that coached the teams and stuff knew what they were doing. Knew, you know, it was just organized and it was really fun. Well, Tanisha Benson is with us. She's the owner of Ohio Girls Basketball Report. Welcome to the show, uh, Tanisha. Tell us a little bit about your background and and your, uh, you know, history with OGBR. Yeah. Um, Haley, I appreciate your uh, kind words. Um, yeah. We really make it a point to uh, make sure our, our players are getting that experience of just uh, feeling wanted and um, and involved meeting other players around the state. But I had a very similar um, experience. I started in the uh, seventh grade, sixth or seventh grade, um, at OGBR uh, skills camp. And if anybody knows about skills camp, and OGBR, it was know. tough. Woo, it was days, tough. Three nights in Denison University. It was, man, oh, yeah. it was brutal. Uh, yeah. But the best of the best was there. And um, if you thought that you were close to that, or even if you thought you were better than that, you definitely had to prove it there. Um, and so that's how I started. Built a great relationship with Tom and Chrissy and, and Smitty and Dick and Duncan and, and just the whole entire crew, a gang of uh, really family. And uh, I grew up through uh, the company, um, went from a camper to a, a youth counselor, right, yep. um, into uh, a young uh, a staff member, then went into administration, and then uh, ultimately uh, Tom and I um, did a, a contract to um, for me to purchase uh, OGBR and as he transitioned into retirement, um, which was, I think, 2015, 2016, I don't yep. know, yep. one of those years, right? Yeah. Um, and so um, the thing I'm most proud of is the fact that we're going into year 25. In January, we'll be in year 25. And uh, for a lot of companies in girls basketball, especially grassroots, a lot of companies can't say year 25. Um, a lot of businesses were lost in COVID, uh, as well as other changes of our game. And, and we've been able to remain at the top um, and inspire uh, girls basketball and, and honestly grow the game. So. Um, that's my experience. I've been through it all. The only side I have not done is, well, no, I have. I had a couple kids of my own personal kids and I was going to say as a parent, uh, but I know that side too. That's cool. So I think I got it. Yeah. I think I, the only thing I have never done, honestly, Jim, I, this is a true story. Haley. I've never been able to coach in the event. Really? Tom never let me coach. Yeah. They never let me coach. I, I don't know if it was my coaching ability. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Man, Tom I'm and I never got to, to talk about it. I don't know. Definitely. Yeah, we never Definitely. got a chance to talk about it. But <laughs> man, I, I felt some type of way. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's my experience with OGBR, and so Love it's it. been fun running it for the past seven, six, seven, eight years. I'm proud to say. Um, from my own experience, you know, with you, with me doing 38 years now, and OGBR doing 25 years, you yeah. know, you don't find people that stay around that long. A lot of times you find, to be quite frank, you find parents that come in and do their thing and leave, or people know they can grab a quick buck and leave. But for us, 62 years or 63 years, I forgot my, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have the Greenville math like you do, Haley. But oh, man, you, I don't know about in this game, it just shows, you know, and I'm not saying anything about my long years, but the fact that we together have been in this thing for so long, it just shows that it, it should be about the kids and that's how it should always mm-hmm. be. Oh, yeah. Oh, I actually agree with more. We talked about this in um, uh, uh, Sports City and, and uh, our new merge with uh, Sports City Angels that our number one priority is uh, our brand, and the brand is the girls. And so, you know, when you're focused on the girls, um, everything else 
really doesn't matter. Everything else is, is not as important. Uh, and you'll make the best decision if the focus and, you know, priority is the girls. And so we've really tried to do that. We've changed with the time. Um, I mean, Jim, you remember back in the day, we were paper, right? Yeah. We didn't even have online. Right. <laughs> don't remind me. I don't want to go back. I like, I love those no, days. I, I love those days almost as much or more than I like these days, but don't remind no. me of that paper. Don't remind me of no, that paper. No, it was, it was awful. People do not understand how much work was put in back in the day. And it still is now. We're just a lot more, you know, up to date, but I mean, we were shipping out our scouting service on, you know, in the mail all over America, you know, to make sure that Ohio That's girls crazy. were seen and, and yeah. getting recruited. Yeah, like our bill for U.S. Postal was unbelievable. Wow. Oh, like yeah. I really feel like we should get an award, um, you know, for all the full years, you know, sending out the report and, and just on the phone and all the things that it takes to make sure that these girls are getting a great opportunity um, to play at the next level. You know, I tell before Haley jumps in here, I tell uh, – People, how I'd love to see, and we just talked to Megan Losinger from Wright State, and you know mm -hmm. Megan. Okay, yep. And yep. Um, we talked about how I'd like to see the players back in the 90s and 2000s Literally. in their prime play today. Yeah. Because, Ooh. you know, I would love to see it, or I'd take Haley back with me to the, like, 1990s so she gets to watch <laughs> the Katie Smiths in her prime. And, you know, yeah. those kind of players, Marlene Stallings, congratulations, yeah. Marlene, by the way, Marlene Stallings yep. in her prime. And so, yep. you know, it was good stuff. It was. Uh, I'm sure it was actually. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen it, but we're going mean, to, we're going to get a time machine. Okay. We're going to go take, okay. we're going to take you back there. So um, let's talk about like the exciting things. Obviously OGBR is already a big hit, but you know, in the future, what exciting things do you think are going to happen in the future for OGBR? Mm, we are moving into a different direction. We're, we're really, really focusing on being more of a resource. Um, there, there's so many events that are going on, and uh, we've kept <laughs> yeah. our shape a little bit. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is is that uh, we're still having the same conversations with parents. Um, yeah. We've started to, got, to get a lot of conversations with parents about how do I get my kid recruited. Uh, we know that this is a dating game, right? And, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is that, you know, you start off talking. Is there some interest? Is there not some interest? And, you know, just like in real life, you don't always understand the rules of that. Right. And so a lot of players, one, they start too late, right? Number two, they're not prepared. They don't know what's right. They don't know the calendar. They don't know what is true exposure basketball. What does that look like? Um, uh, they're not checking all the boxes. There's some players that, you know, need some more development but have never been told that. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, is by the time they get to the end of their junior year, senior year, they are with no options. And it is so devastating to talk to a parent and a kid yep. that has lost hope in a dream that they've dreamed since they were four or five years old. And so OGBR, we're really, 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 really raising the bar in that. Um, and uh, we built a whole new side of our company called Recruit Ohio. And it is for parents uh, and players to learn the, um, the, I guess, the style, the information, uh, the process of being recruited um, and having those conversations, things that we need to talk about, red flag, hopefully to reduce transfers, right? right. And yeah. also make sure that players are placed in the right division. I have no idea what this thing about is that uh, I'm not a great player if I don't play D1. I have no idea where that came from. I, I don't either, Tanisha. Um, it's, just, um, it's terrible. It's, 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 a, it's just a misnomer. Never that people, once have and, I and, thought, you know, what? have I dreamed about going to D1? Of course, everyone does. But would I ever just settle for that? No. You know, look at your options. Look what you got. D2, D3, like, NAIA. Like, please go check out those colleges because, you know, you can get your college paid for free and play basketball for free. Like, you know, it, it doesn't get any better than that. You don't always have to go to D1, D, you know. Check out the other colleges, too, and see what they have to offer and see where it takes you because you could go, you know, play at NAIA and then go to a D2. You know, you never know. So, yep. you know, you Absolutely. don't have to be playing. Or a junior D1. college. You don't have to be playing D D1 to be a great player or be known as a great oh, player. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah, we, we want our players in Ohio. And, and, I, and, and really, I want this for um, players all over the, the country um, to be healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't say happy. I said healthy. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and healthy is a balance of athletics, academics, social, mental health, all of those things, uh, relationships, right? Networking, mm -hmm. uh, future opportunities, all of that matters. 
And if it's so one-sided, um, it never tends to work out for those players. And so in Recruit Ohio, we are taking the time. Um, we've been doing consultations for the past week mm -hmm. uh, with players and parents that have, you know, um, reached out, in, you know, through the program. Um, and a lot of things have came up. Like, they didn't realize, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't go far away. Right. They Excellent. never talked about it. Yeah. Uh, never talked about, well, what does it look like for me to, um, you know, uh, not start my freshman year? Ooh, -ooh. Right. Well, we got to talk about it. Yep. Uh, what, what does that look like if, if you know, I want to go to school, they don't have my major. Right. But that's the offer I have. Oh, we got to talk about some stuff. Yep. Right? So, um, it, that, it's, it's really that. So, uh, Recruit Ohio, um, you'll see a lot more about that. Um, uh, um, we have a, a group on Facebook. Uh, so a lot of the parents will bring on colleges, different people in the business that can help and give information. OGBR is that way. Uh, we really feel like it's important for um, our parents and players to be educated and uh, uh, use wisdom as they're going through this transition for their kids um, to be healthy in their four years in college. So I'm ex I am so excited about that. Um, Me too. It sounds I, I, interesting. I'm excited I mean... about it. Yeah. It's going to be really, really good. A lot of parents that have already started the program with us um, are really, really, really digging into some things that they probably should have known a long time ago, but, you know, they, they didn't know. And so um, uh, we're starting with the seniors, and then we're going to open up the course for juniors and then sophomores, and then we'll get to freshmen. But we're Sweet. starting with seniors right now that, that don't have any offers or just looking for options. Excellent. Tanisha Benson yeah. from Ohio Girls Basketball Horse. Stay right there, Tanisha. We're going to take about a minute break and be right back. You are watching Behind the Arc, Jim DeBelt, Haley Bank, and Kevin Fowler. TKDS Sports Network. We'll be right back. The Dave Arbogast Group has been driven driven to your satisfaction for over 28 years. We always compare our competitors' prices so you get the best possible deal. Shop our great selection of Ford certified pre-owned vehicles, as well as many other makes and models. Experience one of Ohio's top rated Ford dealers, Dave Arbogast. Now is the time to pre-order that new Ford vehicle. At Dave Arbogast Ford, we make it easy. Get started online at arbogastford.com or visit our dealership just off I-75, X69 in Troy. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant, more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, on Behind the Arc with TKDS, Kevin Fowler, Jim DeBelt, and Haley Binkin, myself. Um, Tanisha Benson from OGBR, uh, continuing our show with yeah. her as we took a little break. Uh, Tanisha, it's been a great conversation so far. I, mean, I know. Tanisha, you got some okay. good good knowledge there. Yeah. Really like to hear what's oh, yeah. coming up, though. I know. All right. So here we go, then. <laughs> Tanisha, uh, you and Jim talked about bringing Ohio back to the way it used to be. Uh, what are the positive things you see right now in the game today? Listen, our, our you know, every, uh, I'd say decade, you're going to go through about two or three classes that um, it's just very top-heavy, meaning that there's, you know, five or, you know, really, really high-level players, and then, and then it kind of, you know, dwindles down as far as our numbers and stuff like that. Um, Ohio looks really good right now. It really okay? does. We look, yeah, <laughs> it really, really does. Really good. I'm talking about all the way down, Haley, I'm talking about all the way down to the 2032 class, which I know if we did our math, <laughs> that is so young. <laughs> None of them are in middle school. Okay. Right. Uh, Kevin, um, I don't know if you and I will still be doing this in 2032. I, will be, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't get in this. Not okay. to do it. All then. right, Haley, we'll stick around if for Denise you. If Denise is going to do a game, I'm going to be there if they're doing right. something. We got it. Right. 
We look good, guys. I'm yeah, darn you, right. You tell them, Kenesha. We good. We do. We got some players, some babies that are fired up. It's almost as if, like, I don't know. It's almost as if, like, a fire has been lit up under Ohio. And it's like these younger girls, I call them babies, but these younger uh, young ladies are fired up about playing. They are so competitive. They want to be the best. They want to be around the best. They want to be challenged. And, uh, you know, it's just a very, very good vibe going on in Ohio with our players. Um, I kind of think we kind of got a little tired. Ohio did. We got a little tired a little bit. Uh, but it is picking up. And, and I see a different state uh, than what I've seen um, in a while. Um, and for us in Ohio, having a, a, a down year is what? Last year, what? Four McDonald's on there? Anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, we're really good, but to see that competitiveness and that desire to be the best, you can't teach that. No. So, it's so hard to teach that. So I, I'm trying to do math here real quick, and that's not good for me, but you said four <laughs> McDonald's All-Americans. How many McDonald's All-American girls on the girls' side are there in the nation? Oh, 24. And four of them were from Ohio. Yeah. That's, wow. That's, right. that's not even one from every state. No. No. And we still got four of them. So we knocked off four other states that didn't even get in. You know, this is a little different, but we right. went to Columbus for the OGBR event. In, um, top 64. Top 64, yeah. yeah. And we, I seen, you know, I know this isn't too, as young as we were talking about, but there was a few eight, even eighth graders, like even seventh, eighth graders that were just oh, yeah. tearing stuff there, up. There's and a I'm kid like, from Cleveland. I think she's from Cleveland. I can't think of her oh, name. Yeah. Urban. Is it Urban? Oh, yeah, Bella. Oh, Lord. Man. That kid can play. I tell you what, there was this one. I don't know what her name was, but I loved watching her play. A little eighth grade point guard just I think handling, Be- Bella Urban is handling like, yeah. the rock like it was like she was in college. Like I swear, like <laughs> she made it look easy, <laughs> and it um it really impressed me seeing these young girls just mm-hmm. coming in and wanting to play the game of basketball because you don't always get that. You don't want you don't always get people wanting to play the game. You just you know want to be there and be shown, you know, you just be able to want to play the game and it's a lot more fun. Let me ask you this. I got a question on that. This is just sitting on the outside looking into Nisha, but do you Mm -hmm. foresee starting such a young age and so, Mm -hmm. I mean, basketball is in depth there. You got OGBR doing stuff, the turn the AAUs, the girls basketball, whatever they are. And, and do you see the younger girls potentially getting to burnout? No. No, I, that was that was um, I do think that was a thing back in the day. But I think because it's so uh, recruitment is so different with the transfer portal that if you don't get good early, like recruiting is happening earlier than what has happened before. So there's things that you have to have cleaned up by the time you're in the ninth grade that you didn't have, you donn't have to worry about that. You can get a scholarship in your senior year. Right. Big time D1. Now that 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 schedule has been moved up. And so if you're looking at a kid in the sixth grade, seventh grade, it's kind of like, you know, I use volleyball. If you've never been taught volleyball, coming into your 10th grade year playing volleyball is really hard. Yeah. Like, you just don't get it. It's, it's, it's very complicated. And so it's the same thing with basketball. You need the hours. You need the, um, the time. You need the experience. And experience is hard to just randomly get. No, you have to put the time in to get the experience. Um, so that your level of play is really, really high. And they're starting to figure that out. The more that I compete, the more I play, the more I train, the more I do this, my level of recruitment is is definitely higher. It can be, has the potential to be much higher. And these girls, I mean, these are basketball players, right? These are not girls that just play basketball. These are basketball players. People that this is their dream, this is they want, want to do, and uh, uh, they're committed to it. Um, but yeah, no, 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 no burnout um, from those young ladies. And yeah, they're, they're they're a little bit different. <laughs> you know, you said like putting in that extra time and work, um, and some of it goes unnoticed, unnoticed, and some of it doesn't. But you know, that shouldn't uh, stop you from doing what you love and doing what you do. So I think putting in that extra time and work uh, really helps out. Yeah, uh, I agree. They got to do it. Definitely. They have to do it. You know, Tunisia, so many people. Uh, in this business, in this industry, are so focused on the D1 Power 5 kids. Mm-hmm. 
That leaves like 90% or more of these players trying to figure out how to navigate all these opportunities out there. And there's tons of opportunities. So many. How does OGBR help those kids who are often overlooked because everybody's focused on those five D1 Mm -hmm. power kids or five power five kids, for example? Yeah, that's that's, that's what I was talking about, Recruit Ohio. Okay. We've been having this issue for a while. Simple answer. God of mercy. You know what I mean? It's just been... I mean, it's just, it's been the same, you know, issue. And unfortunately, a lot of the players, they do get overlooked and they mm-hmm. can ball, they can play. Like I literally just got a text message right before I got uh, on, on, on the uh, call. Um, uh, simply, you know, any 22 that need a school, I have D2 and NAI looking. We get that often, right? But it's hard to connect and match the players if we don't know that they're available. Yeah. Or we don't know that, you know what I mean, what they, you know. You, you can't, know, you, can yeah, that. you can't always do all the work, you know. They got to, like I said, like you can't just go in and go into practice on, like, the days that you practice. You have to get your name out there for yourself, you know. Like, you have to, you know, on the weekends, if you have the weekends off, get in the gym. Do something little, like get your name out there, put in some workouts, extra time and work, and, you know, you'll be more known. You know what I mean? So. Yep. And, and, and this allow us to be involved in their recruiting process yeah. a lot more versus us just, you know, and that we talk about true exposure, right? Right. Okay. It's one thing to uh, highlight a kid, right? That's one thing. Right. But we're doing another step further mm-hmm. by saying we need, we can be involved in your recruiting process Yeah. to help, you know, you get answers that you may not get, mm-hmm. information that you may not get. And then uh, ultimately, obviously, for years, we work for colleges with our scouting service, right, the report. Yeah. Um, this allows us to have a healthier relationship with our colleges. We already do, but, you know, for kids, that, when they're looking for a kid, they call. And now we have, you know, a, lo- a, a roster list of kids in Recruit Ohio that uh, are well-educated, knows what's going on in their process, know what they're looking for. Um, like, for instance, like preferences, right? Like, there's kids that want to go Ivy League. Yeah. How in how are we supposed to know that? Well, OGBR when we went online, that was a part of our scouting service. Is that there's you know when we put them in, they select um, you know their preference, and so that allows us to match a lot easier um, uh, with the colleges as well as the players. And so, uh, like I said, you'll be seeing a lot of that uh, coming out. Recruit Ohio, we have a, a on app. Um, it's gonna be crazy. It's a resource. That's what it is. It's a resource. Um, and, and of course, we'd love to have you guys help support, you know what I mean, talking to players and parents, um, you know, when we do our webinar and stuff like that, and you know, uh, you know, educate them on what's going on because um, it's definitely changed. Well, definitely. you know, Tanisha, I'm in to help you do anything you want, mm-hmm. anything oh, yeah, you want. Yeah. You know that. Just got a call. I, hey. And, and that's it. That's even if, like, getting in your coaching and stuff, you know, maybe we can get you to coach a game or two. Maybe we <laughs> Hey, rumor has it yeah. on the street is that there's some young lady from OGBR might be at the Dayton shootout. Maybe we'll put you on the bench oh, oh, and oh. let you coach a group of girls. Damn. Don't do me like that. Don't get me hey, excited. I'll even do it. I don't hey, know, I, <laughs> I tell you, you got to be better than Bondo, so hurry up and get there. Yes, put me in. They never let me coach, ever. They never let me coach. I really hey, had a serious Hey, I, I don't know if you know they this, but Haley and I, it's this. we're co-hosting okay. the shootout this year. So Haley just made an executive decision, Tanisha's coaching. So who's yeah. going to be the other coach? Let's Can we get go. a duel here? Can we get, like, coffee on one side and Tanisha <laughs> oh, on the other? That would be yeah, awesome. me and coffee go at it. Well, Let's you be ready. Go. You be ready to get on that sideline and coach then because I already said it's happening. Hey, the, bo- right. the, the boss has spoken. The boss so, has spoken. So okay, on top of that, on top of the recruiting, you're still doing events, correct, Tanisha? I was going to talk yeah. to you about the journey to the tourney. Talk, yeah, talk yeah. about the journey to the tourney and how that's coming Your along. Other events. Uh, she's got some great stuff on the horizon, the I think, journey too. journey to the tourney, we went to, um, yeah, we, we what brought, month was that? We broadcast yeah. that last November. That was, that was yeah. an awesome event. Yep. Yeah. I, I love it. Thanksgiving time. We had great Thanksgiving yeah. dinner. Yeah. Yep. Talk yeah, about that, journey, Tanisha. Yeah, journey is coming up. Um, uh, we're getting ready for it there, and I'm actually it, it pulling up, so I'll actually – um, we have so many um, events. Obviously, Journey's coming up. Uh, border Battle is coming up before the end. Yeah. Um, uh, Journey is coming up. Uh, Classic in the City uh, in January. And then we start all the way back over again. Um, but um, it's it's going to be... <laughs> 
I don't have a calculator on my fingers working that while I lost count. I think I, I think Kevin's going to say Jim and Haley and the rest of the group. Well, here's the biggest. We're going to be there. We're going to be there. Yeah. But like the next one, she said border battle, and I'm thinking, oh, this is great. Two high schools, all star teams going against each other, and then she tells me it's six courts. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> here we go, <laughs> Tanisha. You never stop to amaze me how much basketball you put on for these kids. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It's awesome. I think it's awesome. Yeah. And then to hear, you know, with border battles, you know, uh, Indiana has really been talking a lot. They're talking some smack, Tanisha. We need to. Yes, we, they are. So if you're out there, Indiana, if you're out there, we're coming for you on September 18th. Oh, oh. Hey, 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 wait. We need Indiana. We need hey. an Indiana station. Don't get me banned from I, Indiana. I feel like we're on, like, we're, we're like in the ring on a Monday Night Raw, and I'm pro- pulling a promo <laughs> saying, Indiana, we're coming for you. Oh, boy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah, Indiana, we're. And they're fired up. They, I mean, their registration is looking good. Our registration is looking good. They have I great mean, players. They do have great players. That's great. Oh, yeah. That's good. Well, that's we're going to cover it. We're going to have some coverage there. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. We're trying to figure it yeah. out. It's a difficult place for us, but we can figure it out, I think. Um, but yeah. beyond all that, are you looking to do any any other unique things, stuff with OGBR for basketball? Um. Uh, yeah, we're 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 looking to. Um, uh, we've already started this. Um, we really got to impact uh, Ohio a little bit more. Uh, if we're looking at it as far as teams and high schools, and this is a a, a concern. Um, it has been a concern. Um, but um, we're losing a lot of freshman teams, guys, yeah. uh, in our state. And our JV team, we don't have as many as well. No. And so when you're looking at that, that means your numbers are dwindling, right? Yep. And so we want to inspire kids at a young age. I didn't say have them play a ton of games. I said inspire. And when you inspire at a young age, you tend to have more, you know, uh, a healthy basketball um, uh, time frame, right? Uh, extended amount of time. And so um, we're looking to do some things with um, uh, OSHA. Uh, I've done it in the past, but with COVID, we stopped it. Um, champ camp um, at the state tournament. Um, uh, just just different things to be able to inspire the young people and the players that we have. Um, uh, very, very different types of events. So not just typical showcases and things like that. Um, we're looking to, um, to move forward with that. Um, but that's what I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it's great. I'm having lunch with Tim here this month here talking about a bunch yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Love Tim. Great Tim guy. from OSHA. Yep. Yeah, he's a great he, guy. A, yep. he, what he does for just sports in general is phenomenal. And Tanisha and I, I'm assuming, hopefully, Tanisha, you guys will be doing some stuff at the state tournament packets. Um, yeah. And, I, and yeah, we, I'll be doing the, the state tournament preview. So you and I will both be involved in that aspect of getting information out to fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, Jim, we, you and I, we've done it for, you know, years, right? Yep. And so, you know, I think we're bringing more coverage to the game. That's one of the things we're going to talk about is bringing more coverage to the game, to our state tournament, uh, and trying to get more people to come and watch great girls basketball. Um, obviously, that's a whole other, you know, subject and, you know, frame that, you know, we're looking to impact. Um, but, um, yeah, well, we're, we're moving in, into that and, and seeing how we can help. High school coaches, we love our high school coaches. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, that okay. we can get you on to doing some broadcasts, some really big games. Maybe yeah, some some good yeah, stuff. We kind of talked a little bit about it. And yeah. I wasn't even gonna announce it. You want me to announce it on we, here? We might as well. Why not? We Let's announce get it. Hey, you, going you know, on. you know that I tried Angie to walk you Sater, down that bridge. You know, <laughs> Angie, if you're well, watching, you know, Angie. Also, I had talked to Angie about maybe doing some stuff with yeah. you at some well, point. If you take Angie. Benson, and then a young lady that works very well with it just graduated from e school, Candace. Candace, uh, I yes. Mean, Candace would Candace, be yes. a great team Thank to go do you. some yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll spill the beans. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I dragged you into yes, it. Yes, so, um, yes. Kevin and I, have, with PKBS, uh, um, um, uh, we're launching um, uh, games across the state, highlight games. Um, um, one because our clientele is college coaches, and so we thought that it would be very, very uh, important to continue uh, bringing exposure to girls basketball while they're in their high school season. And so we're going to do a full out production, uh, broadcasting the games, uh, allowing fans to have an experience um, 
uh, while in uh, those high school games. Like, for instance, if we're talking about, you know, I'll give an example. Not that they're playing this year. I do not know. I can't tell any games right now. But let's say um, Riddlesburg won state championship, right? Let's say they're playing um, uh, Alter, right? Yeah. That one division two, right? Division one, division two, right? And that game is scheduled outside of their season, right? Um, not at our events, not at Classic uh, in the city, not at Journey, but they just scheduled an outside game. That's a game that people want to see. So we're going to give the people what they want what they want to see, uh, seeing uh, you know great players, and not just talking about the typical ones that you see, but just great games. We're going to um, target very, them. Very good games. You know, right. you, you, you know a game that uh, – and, and Oh, I, this, this is a big game, though, you're getting ready to talk about. I know what you're talking about. It's the game you care regional. about. Regional. It's the game I want to see be so bad. Final. It's going to be the It's going to be Tanisha Benson, yep. Haley Bankin, yep. and Jim DeBelt yep. on the call. Regional on the call. finals, Division II, Ooh. Alter. Uh, no disrespect Versus. to anybody else, Purcell Marion. Yeah. I mean, he's making that call now. He's been making it all summer. Hey, me, you, and yeah, Haley. I mean, me, you, and Haley have got that game. Oh, yep. I'll, yeah, I mean, you know, that's huge. fine. You guys, have, that's a game that you know people want to see. Like at the end of the day, we're talking about bringing exposure to the girls. Yep. Um, it, it helps the girls out. It helps make it. You happen. know, know yes. who players are. Get a chance to have an up close and personal experience watching them, and so. Um, uh, I'm going to have to put it on social media now, Kevin. You, I mean, <laughs> you know, we got to get these coaches yeah. talking to us about their big games and getting them thinking. Think outside the box we, and schedule those teams that you might be afraid of in the regular season. So we got a good list. Wait yep. till you see Kevin as you guys I can't wait. Right. You know, right. you know that I'm. And I haven't had our our, our uh, in depth conversations <laughs> yet, but yeah, yep. we've been getting games. Um, and uh, it, it'll it'll be posted. I have to post awesome. it obviously. Uh, Early next awesome. week is now everybody's going to know. Uh, and we got to get um, it in quick as we build the team because here's the deal. We're getting ready to go down to Florida, at least I am, to launch a network there where they're doing a college football showcase and they want to do a college yeah. football a basketball showcase this year. And they're bringing teams from other states to come in and play, co- you know, the, the top recruits in there and ESPN's coverage, all this stuff, right? Well, that's happening. Yeah. And we're talking to them about bringing a basketball showcase down to Florida of high school kids and one of my great – things is on the girl side was to talk to you and say, what are the two or three teams we should be talking about coming to Florida and playing a Florida team at yeah. a big showcase? Haley, I, Haley, I don't think you want to go to Florida. Yeah. Do you? Oh, I probably won't come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Haley, yeah. Haley, so, so I'll what announce was, that we're opening an office in South Florida right now to, yeah. to do a uh, football and stuff with Broward County Athletic Association. So a lot of announcements right here on Jim's show. How does this keep happening, Jim? You get oh all the God, great ones. Hey, hey. That's what people need to know. There is now. so much stuff going on. Haley, exactly. Haley and I said we're going to pack our bags now. and We'll be we'll see you in Florida, Tanisha, in about a month. How's that? Yeah. I'm go, I'm coming, too. You're not. Yeah. I'm, we, I'm, we ain't I'm coming back. On a plane. No. We aren't, no. com- we aren't coming back. No. Sorry. No. <laughs> Leaving <laughs> on a jet plane. <laughs> So, no, the point is that there's so many good things that are coming, so many things that are great that, that, that are going to help the girls and grow the game. And so, um, you know, we just tell people, hey, put your seatbelt on. It, it's going to be a ride. It's going to be fun. Um, it's going to be exciting. And uh, I'm excited to, one, be a part of it um, and to be with great people like you guys uh, that make this happen um, and makes this uh, make sense for a lot of our uh, young ladies. So. A lot of things are getting are, are definitely going to come out in the next few months, so we're excited about that. Awesome. Well, Tanisha, we really do appreciate you coming in and uh, take a time out of your evening to uh, join us on the show. It was really exciting having you on here. Oh yeah, I appreciate you guys. Uh, this is great. Um, you know, I think people need to know, uh, you know, uh, who who's in the business and what they're mm-hmm. doing and how they're doing it, and and be connected with those people. Um, and so, you know, um, I, I, thank you for having me on this show. This is going to be great. You. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys will have me back, you know, you know. Oh, well, you're always I'm welcome gonna... back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, even if they say no, I'll still oh, say yes. For oh, sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, we're going to. I don't think any no. of us would say no. no we're going to but... have some cool stuff coming up. We, uh. Going to try to talk to Tamika and try to maybe our next show will be down in Florida. So yeah, oh, right. Frickers first. Your next Frickers. show will be oh, a Frickers. Yeah, Frickers. We're going to be on. We're going to be on Monday the twenty. I don't know the date. The last uh, Monday in in uh, in August, 
We're going to be on live at Frickers in Centerville. That's the 29th. Yep, 29th. 29th, 4 to 6. So anybody watching or listening can check it out then. Like I said, we're going to try to get Tamik on. T- Tanisha, we're trying to get Sue on to try to talk about oh, some things. Wow. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're going big time. We're going big time. Legends. And They're legends. They're legends. They're definitely legends, legends. and have Katie on, of course, you know, mm-hmm. she'll do it for us. Okay. So, so yeah. yeah, it's, and Marlene, I talked to, I, and you know, what's going on with that. Marlene is, uh, and I, and yeah. I are, are great friends and we're going to, we're going to have her on the next, probably maybe in September to talk about okay. some <laughs> history of the game. So yeah, you're welcome to join yeah. us anytime. All righty. Excellent. All Thanks, right. Tanisha. Sure. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So everybody, thanks a lot for, for watching yeah, the first you, episode you. of Behind the Arc. And Haley, how do you think it went? Um, like I said, I think everything, you know, when you start out first, you know, it goes with anything. You get nervous, and then once you get the hang of it, you know, like you said, just talk. And be we got a couple so. little hiccups along the way. We but got some bugs. When the but show yeah. can continue like, on I mean, for even, 24 extra minutes, we're doing good. We even, got everybody on. Yeah, yeah. even before the show even started, I said, this isn't It's going to go, you know, without no hiccups. It, we're going to have these, you know, and once we, you know, practice makes perfect. So yeah. it went pretty well. We got everybody on, and um, it was very exciting. I'm ready for the next one. She's ready for the next Uh-oh. one. <laughs> I need to play in the next one first. I, <laughs> yeah, I got my next one tomorrow night when it comes into boat reach. I got the Power Miss Power well, I think hour. I'm just so excited because, you know, there's going to be wings right in front of us. There's going to be the wings in front of us at Frickers. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. No eating on camera, though. No, we don't. We're going to take longer breaks. We'll, like, drool and <laughs> just wait break. we'll, we'll, we'll take a break. So, <laughs> excellent. We'll take a few more extra breaks. Yes, yes. We need some more commercials, folks. So, sponsor us so we can get your yeah. commercials on so we can eat. Yeah. Okay. Sound fair? So, everybody, thanks a lot for joining Thank us. Thank you. It's been so much fun. Episode one, we're, we're here. Great week. Kevin Fowler on the, on the production. The legend, Haley Bankin. Jim DeBelt here. Until next time on Monday, August 29th, live from Frickers at 4, four o'clock. We'll see you then. Everybody have a great week. Thank you. Whether you're meeting for the big game or celebrating after the little one, whether you're sharing stories at the 19th hole or sharing a plate on your first date, your home for fun, food, sports, and spirits is Frickers. At Frickers, kids 10 and under eat free all day, every day, so you can spend some quality time without spending a lot of money. We're more than a restaurant more than a sports bar. We're freaking family. Meet you this week at Frickers. Whether you're now is the time to pre-order that new Ford vehicle. At Dave Arbogast Ford, we make it easy. Start online at arbogastford.com or visit us just off I-75, exit 69 in Troy. The Dave Arbogast Group, driven to your satisfaction for over 28 years. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching Behind the Arc with Jim DeBelt and Helly Bacon, a show about basketball, but not only basketball, women in basketball with several different segments. They'll be on again here in a few weeks. Keep an eye out on all our social media at TKDS Sports and everywhere you know Jim's information, and you will see where our new show is going to be showed up. Our next show will be live on site. Join us, if you can, at Frickers in Centerville every Monday night but especially when Jim and Haley are in the house, I'm sure they'll make it very exciting. Talk to you soon, folks.